refused to give up. Bangs it forward. Ditchburn in front. Eid the hand pass was clever play to Polkinghorn. On to Wallace, who's starting to pick up kicks. To Tuck was a good pass. Tuck on the half forward line. Gets a call here from Byrne. Michael Byrne showing a lot of pace. He's a long left footer too, but goes for the handball quickly to Green. Was it uh, Leverage? Oh, they've mucked it up here. A chance for Pate now. Oh, wild and hairy and woolly out on the full under pressure, Ian Payton. You certainly would not want a, a patent on that kick, Ian Payton. Oh, Austin got high. Russo, play on, it was off the body of another player. Ball still in play. English, Loveridge, grad. No free kick. Oh, he did not have the ball. Up by Cameron calling for a bounce. 24 minutes, third quarter. A big crowd, ideal conditions at VFL Park, and a tight game. Payton, grab, Austin grabbed by Matthews, Perbeck. Austin skims the ball over for a try. Carlton 54, Hawthorne 43. Almost into time on in this third term. A more enterprising quarter, scoring-wise, by both teams. Byrne comes to it again, controls it reasonably well until he runs into Austin, tuck, grab, and another ball up about 25 metres away from Hawthorne's goal. Seconds away from entering the time on period, and the Hawks desperate for a goal or two. Might get it from Loveridge, could try. It's a behind. And the margin is 10 points, 54 plays 44. Perovic to put it back in. Just hit the uh, extra time period in his third term, and the Hawks with the ball still in their forward line, but Carlton have had a grand uh, five-goal one to three-goal four quarter, so the Blues are taking the honours in this term, and that's Ashman's long kick towards the centre. Shadow starting to creep across the field now as half-back view finds uh, Russia, who's taken Glascott right out of the field. Glascott's had two kicks up to the half-forward line. Ashman, an English to help him. Ashman to play on, keeps the ball. English dashes in. Clears it on the half-back line. A neat left footer down towards Klomp. Knocked away from him by Mule. was good football. The Blues have trailed by four points at half-time. Lead by ten now. Glasgow over the top. Lead. Hand pass to Russo if he eventually gets it, although Ayers is there. Clark. And towards Stitchburn, Kelvin Moore with his eyes on the ball, punches the ball away at the last moment, and the ball out of bounds, Carlton's left forward pocket. Into time on in the third quarter by a minute and 15 seconds. A great scoring chance for the Blues. Marcazzani got his boot to it, and it bounces just before the line, another throw in. Carlton 7-12, Hawthorne 5-14 in this low-scoring VFL preliminary final. 26 and a half minutes, third term. Tuck did it well for the Hawks, out to halfback. Fitzpatrick and Byrne. Fitzpatrick could have marked it, Byrne jumped into his back. Carlton want to play on. The advantage rule would have been very handy, but the free kick had been paid much earlier. And umpire Nash was quite right. Fitzpatrick on the half forward line. I'd say too far out to score, but he'll sink everything he's got into this, his 11th kick. Fading away, behind, the Blues by 11 points. They all count in this match, it might be won by uh, one of those behinds, one of those many, 26 of them, 27 been kicked. Well, Blues, known for their third quarter efforts uh, against Hawthorne in recent games, uh, they're in front of them now by 11 points, but I don't think it's enough. The Hawks have got plenty of fight, they can come back. That's Michael Tuck, tackled there by uh, Curly Austin who's played a splendid game against uh, Hawthorne's champion and star Lee Matthews, has not really had a great effect on the game. There they are together at the back of that uh, circle. Fitzpatrick's been too good in the ruck, showing a lot of experience here. He's beaten, uh, beaten Payton, he's too good for Byrne, and the free kick going to Terry Wallace. Wallace at half-back, kick number five, came on just before uh, half-time. Up towards Kennedy, he's outnumbered, and the mark taken by McConville. It's been paid. Peter McConville, far side wing, 
into time on in this quarter by three minutes and ten seconds. Ayers underneath it. Pesasto got up. It's beaten a few of them. Robertson straight to this burn. Screws it back and he's kicked it. This burn's second goal. A bad defensive error by the Hawks. So six goals to two in that third term, giving Carlton a handy 17-point lead at the final change. And the Blues used this break as a springboard to go on and win by 31 points and set up a grand final blockbuster with the Tigers. Ross Ditchburn and Alex Marku finished with three goals apiece for the Blues, while John Kennedy and Alan Goad finished with two goals for the Hawks. Rod Austin was a judge at best of field for his fantastic performance in shutting down Hawthorne skipper Lee Matthews. Well, that's it for this edition of Classic Quarters. Thanks for your company. Join us again next time right here on Fox Footy. This summer, why not sit down to some refined intellect? It looks like a Chico roll, that one. <laughs> Someone said to me, how's school going? I said, I love it. I hate that part when they take inside. <laughs> some gentlemanly discourse. Oh, I finished my career, but I still own a cup. He's a dud. He might be a dud. <laughs> and some immoderate anecdotes. Leave your skateboard outside the milk bar. Yeah. You're going to get a can of Coke. Come back outside the milk bar with a can of Coke. And there's your skateboard on bricks. <laughs> Grumpy old man. All summer on Fox Footy Channel. Simpson to Scotland, short to Babola. He's got it! Oh, Babola's got it! What a kick for Brennan Babola, what a kick for Carlton. Just two and a half minutes left. If anyone can kick it, this man can. Babola stands his ground, starts oh. the it back! Welcome to the replay of the Kangaroos and Carlton from the Telstra Dome. It's round five, 2003, and it's right here on Fox Footy. Did Dennis Pagan ever see this day coming? The day when the team he loved, the team with which he shared so much, would stand before him the enemy. See it or not, such a day has arrived. Emboldened by his successor, the Ruse are up and about. Smashed by port, Pagan's Blues look down and out. There's only one way up for Carlton, and that's over the body of Pagan's past pupils. He could never have envisaged such a thing, but right now, it's the only thing on his mind. Good evening and welcome to Saturday Night Football at the Telstra Dome. Well, of all the keenly awaited matchups of 2003, this has to be one of the biggest. All week they've been calling it D-Day, as Dennis Pagan and Dean Laidley draw their coaching sabres against each other under the dome. Pagan, the longest serving coach in the history of the Kangaroos, up against the Masters apprentices. Apprentice. They're playing it down for all they're worth. Stephen Silvani, welcome to you. Good evening. A coach is so impervious to it all that uh, they can just deny the significance of all of this? Oh, I don't think so. Certainly, uh, much has been said about the two teams throughout the week, but I have no doubt that both these coaches will have a few extra nerves. Dennis Pagan up against his former, former side where he had so much success. 
Dean Lady up against his former coach and wouldn't he love to, to win against his former coach and Dennis Pagan. Kangaroos with just seven left from the team that beat you in the 1999 grand final. Yes, uh, certainly turned the, their, their players over but the seven remaining are very much high quality players and uh, really do lead the fr from the front from the Kangaroos. Here's the first year coach, Dean Laidley with Christy Malthouse. Well, Dean, Glenn Archer back, a huge boost. How effective can he be without full use of his hand? Oh, look, I think he can. You know, Hickmont's one of their uh, main goal scorers and we can sort of quell him tonight. I think that goes a long way for us getting the four points. Archer said yesterday that the players feel perhaps just a little more pressure to perform playing against their former coach. Does it change anything for you? Oh, no, look, it doesn't. I think, um, you know, maybe the pressure's on the other foot. Um, you know, I know what your dad was like when he played West Coast and, uh, you know, it certainly changes a lot of things, but, you know, the boys are fired up, ready to play and that's all we can ask for. They probably know his game plan inside out, but you'd expect Pagan to throw up a few surprises tonight? Oh, look, absolutely. You know, it'll be uh, here, there and everywhere tonight and we fully expect that. We've been through it and through it with the boys and, you know, I think they should be a full book on it. McKern, they've got McKernan back, but he may be a little underdone. He attempted to rotate a little more in the ruck just to really test it. Oh, well, look, that's why we brought in another ruck and David Hale for his first game, because we really thought that um, he needed that opportunity and Ports needed some support, which would be good. OK, thanks. Good luck. Thanks, Dean Laidley sounding relaxed enough. Let's have a look at the teams. Now, the Kangaroos front half without Rocker, a late withdrawal, replaced by Shannon Motlop, but Martin out for Carlton. Prendergast comes in. He does, and he'll be opposed to Brown, but just have a look at that full, full forward line. Harding, Brown and Rawlings, plenty of speed and height. They'll be opposed to McKay, Prendergast, and we also see on this half forward line, Jones, Petrie and Morell. Lappin, who's been in very good form, so is Thornton, but have a look at this matchup. I think it'll be a key one. Morell against Beaumont. Beaumont needs to stand up tonight. Morell is leading their contested marks with the Kangaroos, and he's such an important player for them. Kangaroo midfield yep. in form, Simpson on fire. Yes, plenty of experience there, Harvey, Simpson, and Sinclair, but also with Carlton Hume, who's an in and under play, Kudafides, and also Murphy. And the Blues needing Whitnell and Favola to stand up tonight. No doubt, and they're opposed to King, Colbert, Archer. Plenty of experience there, but Whitnell will have the support of Horlihan and Davies next to him. And we just see the full full back line for the Kangaroos. Make Peace, who provides so much drive for the Kangaroos. Watt and Baird, Hickmott, Favola, who's a goal kicker at the moment, and Young Waite show, showing plenty of good signs. And we poured up, up against his old side, alongside McKernan as well. And shouldn't that be a fantastic contest? But uh, Grant and Spawn. Spawn has uh, done the go with roll for the Blues over the last couple of weeks. Grant in very good form. Three goals last week, and Spawn will need to mind him closely. Interchange at the first bounce, the two Motlops, along with Clayton and Hale for the Kangaroos. For Carlton French, leaving McKernan carrying the ruck. Fisher, Wiggins, and the youngster, McCormick. The Blues against the Kangaroos and Carlton making their entrance. Corey McKernan back in the lineup, but uh, Carlton relying so much these days on youth. Well, they have, and uh, they have got a very young back line. And uh, I mean, those players need to stand up for them tonight, along with the experience with McKay there also. And the fact that they do rely so much on youth might be responsible for those figures. Well, just have a look at this. They've given away 22 free kicks in their defensive 50. That's the worst in the competition. But even to make things worse, 12 of those have resulted in goals, so uh, a pretty poor result there for the Blues. A pity Mick Martin's out. There are many dimensions to tonight's match, not the least Corey McKern in the first 182 games of his career, played for the Kangaroos, now has a Carlton best and fairest to his credit and returns from injury for tonight's big match. We're delving deep into our collection. In the vicinity of Kerry. Oh, to give you all the best footy action. From the Fox Footy Archives. Well, he's had a rock and rolling season. Down and out and back he comes. Can he finish it off with a goal? Billy, you are king of the world. The monkey's off the back, Billy. The Fox Footy Archives, all summer on Fox Footy Channel. 
There's never been a better time to get into a new look Camry Altise. Because right now, the 2004 Demonstrator clearance is on. With a fuel efficient four cylinder VVTI engine, air conditioning, dual front airbags, cruise control, and automatic transmission from just $25,988. Don't let anything get in your way. now at every level. Hawthorne down by a point. It could change. Oh. And the mark is taken by Hall. The huge cloud is lifted. What a game. What a story. It's been a beautiful day in Melbourne, a glorious autumn night. They're playing under the roof at the Dome. I'm sure that won't diminish what should be a great occasion. Michael Christian, good evening. A lot to look forward to here. Yes, certainly, Tim. And I think the Blues a big chance tonight. The Kangaroos coming off the, the big road trip from Perth. And we saw what happened to Collingwood on Anzac Day. So uh, it should be a pretty good game. And, of course, Mick Martin... Uh, what a pity he's not playing because he would have loved to have lined up against his old team. I oh, no doubt, a late withdrawal. And uh, we just see Glenn Archer there playing his first game of the season. That left hand there, well, it looks like he's got the glove on it, but uh, a little bit of bandage underneath that glove for Glenn Archer. Let's go down to Christy Malthouse and check the conditions at ground level. Christy, good evening. Thanks, Tim. Well, before we go to the conditions, I just want to quickly say something about the chairman's address, uh, which was just over an hour before the game, where Dr. Alan Aylett made a plea to all Kangaroos supporters to become members. He's worried that, at their lack of numbers, and on Monday, 100 people from the club, including coaches and players, will ring all members who are yet to renew and get them to sign on and become members. You can hear this crowd roaring, and I'm sure it's these people who he wants to get to sign up to become members. Quickly to conditions, very warm, very very humid here at ground level. Well, all is in readiness. Corey McKernan against his old side, playing under his old coach. He's been missing through injury and a chance now to get the Blues underway. Good crowd in at Telstra Dome. The opening bounce, McKernan. Neither Rudman can touch it. Chance for Beaumont. Kemper rally now. Good tackle coming from Jones. At half forward, a free kick. Yes, there will be. And it'll go Carlton's way and taken by Beaumont. Well, you'd expect the first five to ten minutes of this game to be pretty fierce. Both these teams had plenty to play for. Goes long in towards half forward. Sinclair, spectacular fly. Don't know whether his coach would have been quite as impressed. Lappin had an air swing. Watt squeezing out the hand pass. Good Shepard laid on for Vola. Stevens, Sinclair. Rawlings and Sinclair again as the Kangaroos build up and that's a good delivery to Morell and young Thornton has been given another stiff task. Morell high towards half forward coming out Petri will drop the mark he should have taken. Free kick meantime Kangaroos way. And coming back to David King. As we watch it again and there's being held by Murphy. So David King who had a pretty good game against the Dockers last week. 19 possessions. Kicked a goal. Of course, two-time All-Australian from 50 metres. Thumping kick. The goal the player doesn't move. The Kangaroos on the board at Telstra Dome. Well, a great start for the Kangaroos, Steve. It is. Just the start they wanted. Uh, David King, we know what a lovely kick he is. But uh, this free kick here, yet another free kick that Carlton have given away in their defensive 50. We see Murphy there just get their hand around David King's shoulder. And uh, we said it early on in our preview that uh, that is something Carlton need to watch. First blood to King and the Ruse. There's plenty of feeling in this. The Kangaroos lead by a goal in the early minutes. Murphy given a defensive job on David King, who has made the first incision. Two defeaties. Well tackled. Porter and Jones for the Kangaroos, who are monopolising the footy early. Simpson's had 100 and more possessions already in four games this year. Petri sweeping to Jones, loading from 45, that's a poor kick, disappointing result. 
And even King couldn't produce one of his legendary soccer kicks at that. But the Kangaroos have it where they want it. Interesting sauce for note, Livingston's down in the front half for Cal. Yes, so he's played most of his footy down back, but uh, Dennis Pagan tonight, he can play as a forward, and he's opted to go with him up forward. Brown, well taken by McKay. Good tackle coming from Stevens. He's wrapped up, bounce. And just getting back to that first goal by David King, it did result from a free kick from Carlton's defence. They have given away a number of free kicks in their defensive 50 and uh, something that Dennis Pagan has no doubt addressed the plays throughout the week. Petri again, two defeaties. Oh, he gives it straight up to Harvey, runs in from 15 metres and kicks another one for the Kangaroos. Well... Well, uh, two mistakes really by the Blues have resulted in two early goals to the Kangaroos. We just see Kudafini's on screen. They're under pressure. Well, he's caught that ball up, and who was there? Harvey, uh, a player that you need to be very tight on, and doesn't he read the ball very well, Harvey? And he's kicked his first of the game. Flying start to the ruse provided by the engine room, and Dennis Pagan with a different view of life right now. Used to enjoy those. The umpires, Darren Morris, Mark McKenzie and Dean Margetts, Porter and McKernan, Hume with the sleeves tonight. Not easy for Carlton to make the takeaway. Last time Kuda Fides was held up, this time Beaumont, and that was Jones applying a stiff tackle. And the Kangaroos, as they usually do, have come to play. Umpire Margetts with a perfect bounce. Petri doing pretty well early. Camparelli has a go. Still no takeaway for Carlton. Now there is. McKernan. Touch ball called, I think. Or is it coming back? It's a kangaroo's free kick. Saw a signal from the umpire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in the Carlton forward half. Someone did give away the three kicks. Kangaroo's loading again. Here's Harvey, who kicked the last goal. That was a hopeful hand pass. Jones and Sinclair. Good smothering by the Blues now, but Houlihan wrapped up, nowhere to go. It's on the Kangaroos' half-forward line, they're pressing again. And there's the throw against Lappin. And a Carlton. And that, that, was, that free, free kick, kick resulted in, I think it was Young Harding for the Kangaroos against McKay. A couple Murphy. of undisciplined acts coming out at the moment. Loose player on the wing. Taken by Wade, he's got plenty of space and plenty of time, Jarrah Wade. Favola dropping back, who tries to take Archer on and beats him. Kicks to the top of the goal square. Mark required at the bat, almost Whitnell. Well played by the Kangaroo defence, Grant. Great handle under pressure to Simpson and out of make piece, and the Kangaroos away. They are running it well. That's four. A fine little player. Disposal not so good. Caparelli in the way. Carlton just starting to impose themselves. It'll happen. Mighty attempt. Very brave attempt. Fierce stuff here. Wade featuring again. Murphy's got it. Dangerous from there. He has just squeezed it home for Carlton's first. So the Blues are on the board. They trail by a goal, but after a slow start, getting into it, high-flying attempt from Lappin was fearless. It was, and, uh, well, Justin Murphy playing in the back line at the moment. Well, he dragged David King up the ground, and he's kicked this from the back line, Murphy, and uh, that was a nice settler for the Blues. Margin six points in favour of the Kangaroos. Much needed goal to the Blues just to get them on the scoreboard. Porter, chance for Brown crashing up from half back. Now the Blues in number. Hume got it to Camparelli. He's at half four. Great tackle from Makepeace. Spilt now comes to Rawlings. Couple of loose players in the centre. Simpson, run provided by Jones. Can he use the football this time? Raking kick to the goal square. King is marked. He wanted to play on. He's been called to play on. What can he muster from here? Not much. Ripped out of his arms by Murphy. Spawn. And now Thornton and the Blues out of trouble temporarily. 
How lucky. King was stiff, surely. Lapham, if you've taken a mark, golly. Beaumont. Carlton dangerous now. Still 60 out. Can't kick that distance. Whitwell's there. The ball is there. They each had a share. Neither had the Lions' share. And it's a behind. Let's have a look at it. Let's just see what he did. It was like Rayleigh really Boyle on the starting blocks in Montreal. <laughs> he took a couple of little steps, didn't he? Play goes on. Blues have the numbers in the city half. Ford line for Carlton. Wait. He's got plenty of time. He settles. Lines up from 49. Kicks across the face. Should have done better. They had a couple of players there. Favola was with him. In fact, it's a mark for the Kangaroos. What? Deep in his own defensive zone. Five points for margin. Kangaroos, great start to the match. Kicked a couple of goals. Perhaps should have had a third just moments ago. Rawlings. And Sinclair he used him. He wasn't really ready for it. Grant. Still inside defensive 50. Shannon Grant. 22 possessions last week against the Dockers. Kick towards Simpson. Well, handball, that was more in hope than anything. Camparelli drills the pass in short. Livingston scored it. Should have taken that. Allows the Kangaroos in. Sinclair hoists it high toward the wing. Simpson in front again. Almost. Couldn't quite control it. Now a chance for the Blues. Thornton. Morell. Bumble. Now Hardy. Now the Kangaroos away. A lot of errors in there. Simpson again. Huge possession earner for the Kangaroos. Week in, week out. Nothing on the end of that, but you never know. Harvey, now King again. Free kick. A free kick to Harvey. And you can just about write this in your record. Yes, and uh, we talk about uh, Murphy. Murphy gave away the first free kick of the game to David Kim, who kicked the, who kicked the goal. And once again here, we just see an undisciplined act, really. I mean, he should have done better than that. And it may result in the Kangaroos third goal but uh, an area where Carlton we said in the preview that Carlton have given away 22 free kicks in their defensive 50 12 have resulted in goals and uh, it looks like two early in this game could result in goals total disposals at the moment 35 to 16 the kangaroos way I know Dennis Pagan plays an economical low disposal game but Carlton's count well down Harvey for his second puts the kangaroos 11 points up Well, a pretty good goal by the Kangaroos. There was a big fight on centre wing, wasn't there, Steve? But they just persisted and eventually were able to get it forward into that dangerous position about 20 metres out from goal. And as we look at Adam Simpson, he's the one that delivered it to the hot spot. And again, the free kick, this time against Murphy as we watch it, just taking Harvey a little high and a good finish from Brent Harvey. And Murphy straight off the ground, giving away two free kicks, both resulting in goals. Wiggins on for the Blues. Simpson again, six disposals already to Rawlings. King leading Lappin, who has the job now on the ever-dangerous King. Finally, the entire yellow Sharon crosses the line. Just a couple of matchups in the Kangaroos forward line. McKay's gone to Harding. Lappin has gone to King. Thornton has got the job on Morell. And Davies is doing a run with Joel on Harvey. The Kernan and Petrie. Stevens in the midst of it as ever. Petri. Caparelli now for Carlton. Spawn. And the Blues make the takeaway. This is Davies. Whitnell arrives third in line. Like Livingston earlier. Got his hands onto it. Didn't finish it off. And previously the rebound saw the Kangaroos kick a goal. Harvey towards half forward. Chance now, Shannon Grant, which way will he go? Decides to handle, Petri, couple of steps, steadies himself. He misses. Golden opportunity to the Kangaroos. Behind only. Well, twice now the Blues have dropped marks really around their inside, their 50 forward line, and been very lucky that they haven't resulted in goals. Camparelli plays on, delivers to Hume. Blues player... On the wing, Houlihan, finger tipper, he's away. Normally he uses the ball very well. Houlihan kicks towards Favola, who's got the sit. Well played by Watt, just shepherded Favola away from the ball, allowing Colbert to take the mark. Baird, looking for Morell, 
Now Fisher's got a real task here. Does very well. Numbers with the Blues. Hume. Back to Fisher. Kick towards the centre. Just had too much carry for McKernan. Wiggins made it look good. Well played by Fisher. He follows up. Now can he use it? Kick inside attacking. 50 for Bola. He's got it. Brendan Favola. And hasn't he stamped himself on season 2003? And we, we just see there young Fisher who's just uh, come onto the ground. He's done two very good acts. He came on and got the, got the sport, brought the ball to ground, but more importantly, he, he followed up and was able to get that ball across to the bowler who took a lovely mark. It's a move Dennis Pagan would have enjoyed. I think Livingston, who made an error that we referred to a few minutes earlier, came off, and you couldn't really have seen him figuring in that midfield exchange as Fisher did. Brendan Favola has kicked 13 goals in the opening four games. Two goals, five last week. Has he got his kicking boots on tonight? Not so far. Disappointing miss. Four goals, Steve, that Carlton have to kick if they're going to be successful tonight. Well, they don't get too many opportunities, and uh, Brendan Favola, when he does kick goals, the Blues generally do win the game. So very important that he does have his kicking boot on. Yes, he's had two accurate days this year or nights where he's kicked 9-1 and a couple of bad ones where he's aggregated 4-11. Archer gets his first kick on return but the result not good and it's Fisher again. Great effort by Fisher going back with the flight of the ball. Now Kudafidis has space and time and Hickmott despite a stumble has been able to mark it. The distance would test him. Colbert with the job on Whitnell. What has Favola? Kick not wonderful stalwart for Carlton. And his kicking has improved a lot. He has attributed that to the work Wayne Britton did with him. Big kick this from nearly 55. Has hooked it a little and has just missed. So the Kangaroos lead by 11 points. Corey McKernan, yet to get the disposal in this match. Make peace at fullback. Decides to kick long. Colbert has to sit and wait. Couldn't complete the mark. At ground level, it's all Carlton. Well done by Harvey, but he gives it straight up to Hume. 50 from goal. The Blues players inside attacking 50 for the Blues. Favola has got it. Now, Favola is one player that can kick 55 metres, and he'll need to. But he is directly in front. Blues trail by 10 points. And the goal here would be valuable. He shouldn't have any problems with the distance, Brendan Favola. And just an example of if you can turn the ball over from the kick in. You've got loose players inside, you're attacking 50. Certainly costly. Brendan Favola. From 55. It's a thumping drop putt, it's close. Does he squeeze the through? He has! Go to Carlton! So Brendan Favola kicks his first, and the margin back to four points. Yeah, they've worked out at the Blues, and uh, this lad on screen, Brendan Favola, as we said early on, if he's got his kicking boot on, the Blues are generally competitive throughout the game, and this was a lovely kick, and one the Blues really did need kicking this ball from outside 50. Superb goal. Count within four points. Keen contest. No, they're just playing it down. Just another game. <laughs> Blues in the game now. McKernan getting Wiggins use of it. Hand pass nowhere. So another ball up. Sometimes think Soss with a a confidence kicker like Favola that having a really long shot like that is the best thing for him because he just really has to concentrate on kicking long distance. Well, it's his action. He's such a lovely long kick. Petri, the rucking and the roving. Here's Harvey. Harvey, dangerous. Good tackle by Wiggins. Jones just getting it off, but to nobody. Lappin and Houlihan. Able to run under it. Fisher a good shepherd. The kick from Houlihan let him down, basically. Ball up. 
It was a terrific tackle back, back there in Carlton's defensive 50. Tim, I think you might have said it was Wigan, but it was young Davies who's actually doing the go-with roll on uh, Harvey. It was just enough, wasn't it, just to just to put them off and in the end cause the turnover. Hoolahan thumps it, goal with Simpson a chance, he's dragged down now, a chance for Hume, can he get the clear possession? No, Hickmont and Whitnell fighting hard at ground level. Free kick, which way will it go? Carlton's way. Hickmont. Well, after a shaky opening in the first four or five minutes, the Kangaroos started extremely well. Carlton have hit back very hard here. As we watch it again, free kick against Archer for a push in the back. Adrian Hickmott kicked a couple of goals last week against Port Adelaide in Carlton's losing side. And Stella Correa, 31 years of age now. Game 174. Davies off, bleeding. Blues also brought off Fisher and Murphy, having served his time as back. That's an interesting move, Steve, because Fisher really added something in the four or five minutes he was on the ground. I'm pretty sure that Dennis Pagan's just uh, letting young Fisher just feel his way a bit. It, it is a long season, and as you see, he's not a, a well-built fella at, at present, but uh, he's a player with plenty of potential. Well, having said that, he's back on the ground. Hickmont. From just 20 metres, misses. Well, they've missed three opportunities now, Carlton. He's trailed by three points. Reaction from Adrian Hickmott. A little more polite than for Vola's earlier. Make peace. Besides City side first and then Dock side. Good option. Stevens. Colbert. Still behind the wing. Make peace again. Providing great run out of the back half and excellent delivery to Morell. That was perfect. Too far out. Now there's an indication from the umpire there's been an infringement by a kangaroo's forward. And so the ball will be exchanged. Did you see what happened, Suss? No, I didn't, but it's about the second or third of the night. Both teams have been involved. Long into Carlton's half forward line. Lappin, forward of the centre. We haven't seen him there often this year. Baird and Rawlings get the Kangaroos out of trouble. And now they can rebound and try and turn it into something. Archer, sitting it up. Neatly done by Harvey against McKay. King, you never know what he'll do. That was perfect. And Harding is only 25 metres out. And he's having uh, a blinded. Harvey at the moment, he's had seven possession and he just got McKay underneath the ball. We just see there, just a little nudge underneath the ball. Didn't really worry whether the, he was going to mark the ball, but just made sure the ball came over the back and he was able to get on it quickly and get the ball across to young Hardy. McKay was forced to leave his man to go and tackle Harding because Camparelli was uh, falling behind Harvey, so it left his man exposed. Been kicking straight this year. And this one wavered, but it did enough. And the Kangaroos go further ahead. Well, well great piece of play there by the Kangaroos. And as we mentioned, able to move the ball forward. Archer again figuring, and what a welcome return to the Kangaroos lineup. And Harvey just running hard, Steve, into their forward line, creating the opportunity, drawing the defence. Yes, very dangerous the Kangaroos when they are running the ball out of their half-back line. So the Kangaroos by nine points. Carlton and very wasteful in this opening turn. McKernan jumps early, takes it, kick towards half-court, and Jared Wake comes to meet it. Well played. And he will have an opportunity from just outside 50. Alex not to waste any time, thump and kick, but he again is offline. And a behind, another one. 2-5 now, Carl Carlton. Margin is eight points. Blues exchange, Ruckman. French on for McKernan. And Adrian Hickmott suffered a very nasty injury in the equivalent game last year. These teams met on the Anzac Day round last year. Carlton's casualty rate that day was... Uh, 
enough to just about finish their season. Kangaroos away, Colbert and Sinclair. Or Carlton, and three of them collide. Jones, oh, he missed King. Davies patched up like Norman Gunston. McKay, loose. Harvey, dangerous. Oh. Great smother. Clever kick, Lappin. Gives Whitnell the run out. And then Lappin receives. My word, he's a creative player at either end of the ground. And now Hickmott on the wing. A couple of great pieces of play. The Kangaroos defence there in their forward 50. Some great tackling by King. Long to half fought. Kangaroos have the numbers. Two defeatings. Red at best. Hume. Little kick inside attacking. 50 for Vola. He's proving a handful. This time against Lee Colbert. And this is exactly what Favola has to do on Lee Colbert. Lee Colbert, not overly quick. Favola, a very quick forward. If he does get on his bike and lead, he will cause all sorts of problems for Colbert. As we watch it again, there was three kangaroos up there against one blue, which left numbers at the ground at ground level for the blues. Brendan Favola has won one. Drop putt is close. He squeezed it home. Closer. So, great reply, a quick reply, more importantly, Steve, yeah, for the Blues. It was, and it probably re resulted in an error by the Kangaroos players. Three of them went for the mark, and we just see the spillage there. Kuda Fever, he's quickly to get onto it. Quick handball out for him, and Favola on his bike, leading exactly what he has to do. Clever little kick from Hume, just hung in the air nicely. Justin Davies showing the scars of battle already. It's not exactly a Norman Gunston. <laughs> it's bigger than that. In the shape of a dagger. These two have been out of each other. We're off on the word, but go. Kangaroos by two. French and Petrie. Kangaroos winning it away. Brown up in the middle and Jones. Just outside 50. Total disposals now 67-46 the Kangaroos way. Freeze dished out quite liberally early. The entries to the 50 interesting. Corey Jones. Miss Q. How will it fall? Well done by Thornton. Just getting a fist in there on Morell. And Trudafiti starting to have a bit of it. And that's a clever kick. Beaumont onto his natural side. Favola led under the ball. Kangaroos with the numbers. This is Hale. Fisher, Favola. Very cool. Drew the tackler. Fisher with the non-preferred. And Archer, wily enough to make sure it's a minor. The margin now just one point. Corey Jones has missed kicked a couple of times in this opening quarter. Anthony Stevens on the bench. He has been replaced by Daniel Motlop. Colbert. Half back, searching kick to the wing. Oh, that was a bad mistake by Clayton. Well, he gets a free kick and a little lucky. Very lucky. Just up the head. He was fortunate enough to get a free kick. Wobbles it inside attacking 50. That was a poor kick as well. Thornton comes to meet it, couldn't control it. Numbers though with the Blues. Free kick meantime to Carlton. They're away, advantage play. Beaumont. Thumping kick towards half forward. Favola at the back. McKernan crashes the pack. What? Kept his composure. Well played. Sinclair. Non-dominant side. Clayton. Marks. Great chase from White. Couldn't quite get there. Another kick. Fortunately, of Andrew King. And he's paid a free kick. Or Mark. But David King is a prodigious kick of the football. And this is not beyond him. He'll need to kick this from about 55. And he's kicked a goal, but also missed a golden opportunity when he marked adjacent to the goal square and was deemed to have played on. And there's the kick. I don't think it was intended for King, but no, he's got it. As a player when kicking for goal, David King generally takes quite a large run-up or long run-up, but can kick the ball well over 50. Taking plenty of time, David King. Got underneath it a bit, but it's got plenty of carriers. Got the accuracy, no. 
Sound for home. Margin out to two points. I wonder if he's tempted to play, try the place kick from out there these days. He <laughs> has been kicking it so well off the ground. <laughs> Super goal, that one. McKernan off the ground has been replaced by McCormick. Lappin has to go long. Plenty of tall timber. Whitnell has been dropping them thus far. Now Kudafidis. Clever. That's very clever. Murphy. Kickbot running for him. Favola starts to move and then sags back. Hickmott keeps coming and now gives Favola the run at it, but he's got lots against him. And Hale, who's playing a tall man back, takes the mark. Kick out wide. Kangaroos everywhere. Clayton, Motlock, or Daniel left it behind. Now he's under some pressure. Confronted by Campbell Rally. He's in real trouble. And kicks it out in the full. Great pressure. It was great pressure. You've seen there's been plenty of pressure out there. A number of plays even dropping easy marks. Beaumont, now they need to get it in quickly to Favola. Hickmott took his time last time they went in. And as a consequence, Hale was able to get back and add numbers. This time he plays on quickly. Favola on the lead. Great mark chipping in front though by Simpson. Not long left in the opening term. Blues have not had their noses in front yet. And the Kangaroos intending to keep it that way. What? And men running for him on the wing. Jones is one of them. It's a lovely probing kick in the, in the uh, Morell direction. Whitnell applying good physical pressure. So much so that Morell lost a boot. Well, Dennis Pagan has opted to shift Lance Whitnell down back. You just see here the mark by Simpson dropping back. He does that so well for all, he, for all his defenders. So enough seconds for the Kangaroos to score from there. And maybe even for Carlton too, if they achieved a quick transference. Whitnell all over the place at the moment, rucking there. Archer does well. Harvey and Sinclair, who's had a bit of it. Pretty good kick under pressure, but oh, oh. Carlton again. Three of them were there, and none of them marked it. We'll get out of trouble, though, without too much difficulty. Wait, who's been good. Hand pass a little untidy for Hickmott. All Carlton inside. Hume. McCormick. Davies a rather fish of the chance. Not many seconds left. Still a scoring chance. Wiggins just had to be pinpoint. And time might beat the Blues, although the crowd reckon they should get it free. They won't. And that's it. That's quarter time. And in a game with plenty of feeling in the lead up, the first term has not been a letdown by any stretch. The Kangaroos lead by two points. For Vola, a couple of goals for the Blues. At the other end, Harvey, a couple for the Kangaroos. Yes, and I think that both coaches would be relatively happy with the way both their sides have got gone. Only a two-point ball game, but uh, a number of mistakes out there, Chris. So uh, it's been a high-pressure game, but uh, we see Favola on screen there. He's kicked the two goals, but uh, the Kangaroos in front, and uh, we should see a pretty fierce second quarter. Well, it's an extraordinary matchup. Dennis Pagan's departure from Arden Street, about as big as Ron Barassi's from Melbourne to Carlton back in the mid-1960s. There was bound to be plenty of feeling in this game, and the Kangaroos and the Blues haven't let us down. constitutes a classic quarter. Is it an incredible win against the odds? Got it! He's kicked it! And the great run has come to an end. An individual milestone. He goes for goal and he's got it. Under goals to Jason Dunstall. Last minute heroics. Any score will do. Or a team's insatiable desire to win. This is unbelievable here at the game. Whatever the reason, if it's a great quarter of football, it's sure to be playing this summer on Fox Footy Channel's Classic Quarters. For details, go to foxfooty.tv.
throughout the week. Petri again, bit of feeding. Oh, he gives it straight up to Harvey, who runs in from 15 metres and kicks another one for the Kangaroos. Kangaroos made a flying start. The Blues have hit back. The days of the Kangaroos being the lowest ball usage team in the league are gone. 83 possessions their way, just 65 to Carlton. Sinclair and Harvey have had it 20 times between them. Stephen Silvani, the old firm, have served the Kangaroos pretty well. Well, they have, and uh, they've really run the ball off the half-back line, Sinclair and Harvey, and uh, two very good running plays, and something that Carlton need to watch. They get plenty of drive out of there, the Kangaroos, and Carlton to win this game, they need to stop that drive. Well, Here's just... Carlton, plenty of entries to the 50, but uh, the Kangaroos achieving some... Uh easy running clearances. Well they have uh, Sinclair's had the 11 possessions Michael and uh, a player that uh, we did say early on needs to be stopped and uh, he's, he's got plenty of support there. Uh, Jones has also provided a bit of uh, run out of that back half but uh, Simpson as well is another that sets up a number, number of kangaroo plays. Brendan Favola, he's been outstanding at uh, the other end. Missed a couple of opportunities, but has nevertheless kicked a couple of goals. Yes, and uh, look, I think one thing that's really come into his game since De Dennis Pagan's been at the club is that he is working hard. It's not about just catching the footy and kicking goals. He's doing things off the ball that he hasn't done in the past. And the thing I like about Favola is he's always in front. He's coming to meet the football, which is a great sign. Good sign for the Blues. Their entries to the 50 in the first quarter when they won matches last year. Uh, their average was 15, and they were inside the 50 16 times in the first term. So they're away on the right foot. Christy Malthouse down on the boundary. Thanks, Tim. It doesn't like that, look like there was any delays in queues getting in here today. The stands are very full, and the crowd is extremely loud here tonight. In fact, quite deafening at times. And they all had plenty to say to Dennis Pagan as he ran out into the field at quarter time. Second quarter underway. Kangaroos with their noses in front. Kuta Fittich, deaf little touch to accommodate Murphy. Kangaroos, though, regain possession. Harvey luckily lands with Rawlings, or did he mean it? Kick towards half foot. Whitnell got a hand. King the snap. Goldwood. It's bouncing. It's bouncing. Off long. In fact, it grazed the post. Lappin was trying to get back desperately. It was a great kick by King. Really got that awkward bounce. A little bit unlucky. Deserved a goal. Lappin. McKay. Good delivery, oh. but another bad miss. That was Spawn. Now double team. Ties Simpson up. Did he get into his back? He did. He rode him into the deck. Michael, the number of drop marks tonight has been unbelievable. Rawlings now into half forward. Carlton with numbers. Grant, though, who won the Norm Smith medal in the grand final against the Blues in 99. Stevens slipping under the McCormick tackle. He's not going to get the ball out of there, though. Great play by Stevens. Just focus on the ball. We saw young Wake come in there and just try to take uh, Stevens' body, but uh, Stevens eye on the ball, and he just kept that in, in the Kangaroos' half-forward line. Just sense that Carlton can get the first goal. Just may give them some confidence. Thornton ran into the umpire there. Morell just hacks it forward. A great tap on from King. Simpson runs from 30 and wobbles it through for a behind. Gee, what an opportunity missed there by Adam Simpson. No pressure. In the end, it was about 25 metres as we look at this collision. Ooh. And Thornton running right into the back of umpire McKenzie. Well, he might be asked to apologise, perhaps firstly, and uh, he might be asked more than that later on because he really did run straight into the umpire's exit channel. This is Wiggins. Now Thornton. Carlton mount their first attack of the quarter, but Watt stands tall for the Kangaroos. Well, they're missing at that southern end of the ground. That's uh, the equivalent end of the Ponsford stand end at the MCG. Maybe the jinx has extended. Harvey now in the back half of the ground. A long lead coming from uh, Petri. Whitnell making the spoil. And Whitnell playing in the back half. Yeah, playing on Petri at the moment. Uh, Petri on that occasion ran. Uh, that lead would have been 100, 150 metres. So he's certainly going to run Lance Whitnell around. Where did Kangaroos... come from the second row? <laughs> Kangaroos with five of the top six ranked players on the ground thus far. 
From the boundary throne, Carlton take it away. Wait, or Token Shepherd. Kudafidis didn't need it. He does now. Handball off to McCormick, who's been impressive this season for the Blues. Chips inside. Hume a chance. Now he needs to use it here. Drills the pass towards Lavola. At the back, Hickmott in space. Can he wheel around? He can. And he snaps. And he misses again. Adrian Hickmott kicks his third behind. And he's been a goal kicker this season, but not tonight. Three behinds, margin back to three points in favour of the Kangaroos. Good crowd in at the Dome. Sinclair. Carlton with numbers there. Hickmott, now McKernan. Hasn't had a lot of it yet. McCormick again. Stevens and Grant. Getting the Kangaroos out of trouble. Daniel Motlop. Good kick. Well weighted for uh, the long lead from King. A rather harding. McKay for Carlton. And for Vola. Within his range. Thumping kick. The Blues are in front for the first time tonight. But Brendan Favola, what a great kick from outside 50. And he really just showed his, his skill there in, in his fishing, finishing ability. No doubt, but uh, he should go give Andy McKay a pat on his, on, on his back. But uh, he got the ball away from Harding. He didn't lose his feet. That was the difference. And he was able to follow the ball up, get the ball over to Favola, who didn't let him down. Third goal to Brennan Favola puts the Blues in front for the first time tonight. They've played pretty well, Carlton, and if not for some inaccurate kicking, they'll be further in front. French, shot by Stevens, shovels it, almost gave it to Morel. Camparelli should get a free kick, no. He'll get a ball up. In fact, eventually he does. Morel go to hit off. Hickmott will take it. At half back for the Blues. Good defeat. He's getting some touches. Murphy's made position. Has to sit and wait. And he's paid. The push in the back. Justin Murphy, who made a couple of bad errors in the early part of the match, was well, taken from the ground. Well done by Murphy. He needed to be strong there. Kicks inside. Hickmott playing up the ground. On the lead. McKernan. Couldn't quite hold on. Maybe recipient of a free kick, no. Kangaroos have numbers. Harvey streaks away to Captain Stevens. Just wobbles it towards Petra. Diving attempt, couldn't hold on. Whitnell, cool. Clever kick, Thornton. The player arrived, Carlton. Hands off to McCormick. Loose player at half by Beaumont, who wiped his hands on his jumper before the ball got there. No, look out, he's tackled brilliantly by Rollins. It could be a mistake. Chance now for Sport. That goal was right. Oh, eventually, the Kangaroos through Cobb but get out of trouble. Simpson, Rawlings, pressure still there from the Blues. Kick gets to Grant, and gee, that was a shocking mistake at half four by Simon it, it was. Uh, he's done that. I reckon that's the second time this year he's been run down like that. But great pressure by the Kangaroos. The tearaway King doesn't he love it? Kangaroos in their 50 first time for a while. Harding almost. Oh, McCain. Well done. Pretty just about in the chops. Beaumont. I don't think he'll play on this time. I think he doubted his ability from the set shot 50 metres out. Plenty of mistakes. Lappin has the skill and composure. Hume doesn't have the loop to try and battle with Baird. Has to let him take the mark. Now make peace. Hemmed in. And can only dab to Harvey between half back and wing. The Blues by three points. Yeah, Harvey, that's his 13th disposal. Wiggins just needs to tighten up. Shannon Motlove on the ground. With red boots. We've seen plenty of white. Motlove thumping, kick to half forward. Oh, Morell at the back almost. Couldn't hold on. In fact, it was Petri. Chance for Grant. He's 30 metres from goal. He doesn't miss these. And he has it this time. Kangaroos back in front.
So the Kangaroos respond after, well, a couple of opportunities to Carlton Steve inside their attacking 50, in particular Beaumont, but the Kangaroos really against the run of play have been able to get their goals. McKernan comes from the ground. Well, yes, and uh, Shannon Grant, well, what a fantastic play. That's just knowing what's around you. He knew the tackle was coming, was able to break it, and uh, he didn't panic under that situation and was able to slot through the goal. Kangaroos in front again, and this could be tight for a long way. McKernan off, French back on for the Blues. Grant, pumping ball. Oh, McKay doing well on Harding. Well played, King. Harding, the opportunist, missing everything. Just a good side for the Kangaroos at the moment. They're on ball as running plays. Harvey's had 13, Sinclair 12, Rawlings 11, Grant 11, Simpson 11. Getting plenty of the ball. Boundary throwing, Kangaroos deep into attack. French, assistance from Thornton, who thumps it. Hands about 30 metres, Hickmott. Confronted by Simpson, Archer. Beaumont sees it to the line. So a very entertaining game of football. Luke Livingston and Ian Prendergast. It was a late replacement for Mick Martin, who would have dearly loved to have been out here tonight, playing against his, his old team. French comes to Brown now. Part of against the line. He runs the full measure, dribbles it. McKay, the only player there. Clean hands. He needed to be clean, and he was. Long to half back. Oh, Archer Elite must give away a free kick, surely. We'll come back to Hitmont, who's getting plenty of the football. This will be possession number 11. Did well, Hitmont. Did well, Hickmont. He just had to push back on Glenn Archer here. See that? Just push back nice and hard. Took Archer's line. Goes along. Hoping for French, who's hoping he can bring it to the back. Make peace, though. Grant getting a bit of it in this phase of the game. Stolen for the Blues, Houlihan, and gets his own rebound. Cool left footer, and Spawn on the proverbial impossible angle. Has Favola out in front of goal. Decides against that. It's a testing shot. There's been some indifferent decision-making and kicking in front of goal at both ends. But sometimes while all that's going on, somebody bobs up with the impossible one. Trent Spawn. Missed on the near side. And Carlton from plenty of opportunities, a 4-8 and trail by two points. 12 scoring shots to nine in favour of the Blues. They still trail, bad. Not much to go to. Two defeat is in made position. Forced to go back to what? That's what confronts him. Campbell, Stevens, look out. Favola's got him. Oh, he gave away the free kick. Well, he was a sitting duck, Anthony Stevens. And Favola should have gone lower at his hips. He didn't. Chance now for the Kangaroos to take it away. Grant across his defensive goal face and uses the ball very well. Make peace. City half back flank. Troy make peace. Taking plenty of time. Draws the pass. Mark taken by Rawlings. Kangaroos. Carlton have done pretty well. They've blocked yeah, they got plenty up across of, the half uh, forward line for the Kangaroos. Plenty of numbers back. They'll look for a switch here, the Kangaroos. He does. Back to what? In the true centre half back position. Now he plays on. Kick up towards Harding. McKay's been his master tonight. Fisher has it. He's been a live wire. Uses McKay. He's got weight short. Ignores that. Goes longer. Ball a hand in the middle. Normally a pretty good user of the football. Looks long. favola has got the sit. Couldn't hold on at the back ramp. Forces it through. No, he keeps it in. Show great poise. Make peace. He's running hard at the moment, Shannon Grant. Gets it back from make peace. Kick is poor. Out on the full. Carlton free kick at half forward. Favola in bother out of that marking contest. He might have jarred his knee, perhaps, as he crashed the pack from behind. He's not the only one to go down hard. Blues working it. Now Thornton up from the back half. And he gets a result. Prendergast is 40 out. 
It was a good decision there by Thornton. He didn't need a blast to the top of the square. The Kangaroos had plenty of numbers back. He just opted to put a short pass into Prendergast, who worked hard to find a bit of space. Shannon Grant starring for the Kangaroos. He's had 10 possessions in this quarter, which is just 13 minutes old. To restore the lead for the Blues, Prendergast misses by a wide space. And the margin is one point. The Kangaroos have taken Harding from the ground, and he's been replaced by Daniel Motlop. Andrew McKay's done a terrific job on young Harding. Make peace at fullback. Just decides to kick to himself. Now, he hasn't got too much to go to. He's forced to go long. Colbert at the back, Brown just waited. Then takes a very comfortable chest mark. Lee Brown, of course, made the move from Fremantle and is a likely customer. Making plenty of time. Cullen have done well. Man up across their half-back line. High kick, Whitnell almost. Well taken off hands brilliantly by Simpson. Well played. Uses out wide. Down on the full. It's great play by Simpson, though. Just reading the ball off the pack and uh, what a sensational player he is. And Corey Jones, who's kicking his him down a couple of times tonight, particularly in the field he's missed a couple of targets and that time missed by a long long way long ball lapping fell for harvey but his hands let him down for once hula hand neatly done prendergast good delivery murphy carlton dangerous here sprayed the hand pass a little camparelli didn't help himself a lot and McCormick turns it over, although Free kick. Carlton will come out of it with a lucky three. Yeah, a little lucky there, the Blues. Wasn't great execution by the Carlton side. From right in the centre. McKernan's just come back. He goes the other side in the Favola direction. Make peace able to cut across. What? I said what? Sinclair, back to what? Dummy around nobody. Spawn and Hickmott. Strong legs, kept his footing and got his oh. kick, but well taken by Simpson. He's had it 13 times and uh, no doubt will chalk up his mid-twenties and perhaps more as ever. Now Rawlings off half-back but under pressure. Kicks it quickly towards half forward. it's all Carlton Lappard, couldn't quite control it, could have his could. Whitnell, who got numbers at half forward. Murphy has it. They should make something of this, Carlton. Chip is poor. Simpson's able to spoil. Make peace deep in his own defensive zone. Grant knocked up getting possessions in this second turn. Hasn't got much to go to. Kick out wide. Stevens made a good lead. With the boundary line too close. If there's an area I think Carlton have improved this quarter, it is stopping the, the run that the Kangaroos have got out of their half back line. Christy Brendan Favola still out there, no problem. Well, he actually looks like he's struggling. The physios have been out to him. They've come off and they've left him out there. But every time he runs, he has to stop and bends over and holds his knee or before it even looked like he was stretching his hip. So who knows what's wrong with him, but he's definitely struggling. Lovely cool spin out of trouble by Grant. It's become an old-fashioned battle of the half-back lines. It has. That's the fly from Favola, and it was the landing rather than the contact while he was up. So it's on the wing. The Kangaroos are in front by just two points. Kudafidis, a little glimpse of the magic. Good Shepherd there. Opened it up for Hume. Delivery again poor. Prendergast still a chance. But again, Carlton unable to work it cleanly from player to player. What the clearance. Stevens just wrenching Sport out of the way. And it might be a high tackle on Sinclair. It is. Kangaroo's ball on the wing. Jared White, the offending player. Jess Sinclair. Chips out wide, Rawlings. Kangaroos, they just haven't got much to kick to. Carlton has done a good job in getting numbers back across their half-back line, making it very difficult. Yeah, this is where they've been breaking down across their half forward line. There haven't been too many options. King makes a lead. Now he will want to play on, tries to milk 50 metres. David King has played pretty much exclusively up forward this evening. 
done some good things, but hasn't had a lot of it. Kick towards half forward. Stevens has made position, drifting down from half forward. Now that could be 50. That could be 50 metres. Against weight, 50 metres, and again another costly mistake by Carlton. And Wake just bearing the shoulder into the back of Anthony Stevens. There wasn't any sense in that at all. And a free kick, a free goal almost to the Kangaroos against the run of play. And McKay just getting over. Corey Jones also getting involved. Well, well maybe it did make some sense because Stevens is slow to recover. Well, there's a fine line, isn't there, on how far you actually do go. Coaches will tell you that uh, you make your opposition earn every kick. And uh, well, on this no, occasion, no eyes for the football at all. Stevens kicks a goal for the Kangaroos. You're right, Steve. There is a fine line, but on that occasion, we'll see it again. The weight had no eyes for the football, just buried the shoulder yep. right into the back. No doubt it's a just silly free kick. Correct decision by the umpire, but you love the courage of Anthony Stevens. Got the really? first weight to arrive a little late in a navy <laughs> blue jumper. <laughs> Anthony Stevens still paying for it a little, but he won't mind. He got the goal. The Kangaroos are eight points to the good. McKernan back on ball for Carlton against Young Hale. Hickmott. It's not a great kick. Kudafidis. And Brown uh, clipping heels, bringing each other to grief. Baird, Rawlings, Sinclair, now Grant. Oh, touch of the hospital ball for Rawlings. Poor kick again. Ball being turned over by both teams. Whitnell to Hume, just three goals kicked in this corner. McKernan needs to mark it and does. That'll feel good in his hands. He hasn't had a great deal of it. And now Lee Colbert is uh, suffering. Beaumont. Again, it's a high ball hanging in the air for a long time, and defenders love him. Baird, Hale, King, soccer it. You might kick it from there, just behind the centre. Oh, well done, Whitnell. Carlton can build again. Loose player in half forward. Poulahan. Poulahan from 50. Drills the pass in towards Spawn. The kick had too much on it. And a boundary throw in. And there's been so many times in their second quarter where they just haven't used the ball effectively inside attacking 50. Here's a mark from McKernan. Strong mark. Great courage by Colbert, but uh, did injure himself in that contest. Chance for the Blues. They need a goal. They've done all the attacking at the fall. Sinclair somehow. Play on to the court. Didn't cover the required distance. And we will get a bounce. But Jess Sinclair has been outstanding. 16 possessions. He had 30 possessions in this corresponding game, round 20 last year, and three Brownlow votes. Blues continuing to have more of it inside their 50. Twice as many in this quarter, but for just one goal, and at the other end, the Kangaroos have kicked two. McKernan gets it down, make peace. Intelligent play, scrambles it to the line. It's not a great strike rate, is it? One goal from 15 entries. It's not, and it's something the Carlton forwards need to work on. It's OK to get the ball in there, but you've got to fight to hold it up and not allow your opposition to run the ball out of your forward half. Houlihan having a breather. Livingston back. Prendergast. Now Hickmott. Hume. Perhaps Hickmott should have kicked. Colbert for the ruse. Kicked it any old way, but uh, that wasn't bad. Rawlings. Oh. And a free kick to the Great tackle by Shannon Motlop before. Right. Magnificent tackle to stop the Carlton, or his Carlton opponent, to, to have a shot at goal. So the Kangaroos ball. And that's not a bad delivery to Grant, who's had a huge corner. Support from Stevens. Well roped by Beaumont, but he was on his wrong side and he just can't use it terribly well. Sinclair. Stevens, another left footer who didn't want to go to the other side. Put Sinclair under the hammer and the Blues win the ball. Hickmott, that's a beautiful delivery. Well, that should be 50 metres. Got to be 50 and Livingston, who's just come back after being taken off early, 
playing at the unfamiliar end of the ground, can have a shot and should kick it. And he should kick this. He needs... Well, just watch this on replay. This is the pressure the Carlton players put on their opposition here, and uh, they cop the ball up. Well, we see Colbert there just getting on the back of Livingston. Maybe a little bit unlucky there, Colbert, but uh, Luke Livingston needs to kick this one for his side and his own confidence. Are you his kicking coach too, Soss? I'm sure you'll claim him because he kicks the goal. Well, a pretty a much needed goal to Carlton finally, just getting some reward for the effort they've put in. But great pressure again, Steve, on the wing where they're able to turn the ball over and a good delivery from Hickmott, which is which hasn't been that common this, uh, this, this evening for the ball. Well, pressure is what creates errors and uh, Carlton then get their just rewards. So the margin back to two points. Carlton have hung in there. Hale gives away. And now you'll get a free kick. Well, McKernan hands on hip. A little bewildered by that decision. 4-1 so to right. the Kangaroos this quarter. And clearances out of the middle. Kick towards King, Murphy, always handballs towards Wiggins in trouble, but he kept his head. Off to Camparelli, driving kick towards half forward. Out comes Livingston again, he takes it, no he does it. Archer, good fight this time from the Carlton forwards, but again the numbers with the Kangaroos. Jones squeezes the kick to Stevens. Archer on the overlap. High towards half forward, McKay in front. Did very well and a boundary throw. Gee, he's been fantastic tonight, McKay. He, he has been fantastic. Attacking the ball, but also on that occasion, Glenn Archer, his second and third efforts, and his back half was outstanding. But we see Andrew McKay on screen having a fantastic game. Neither side looking likely to really break the other open at the moment. Thornton, plenty of purpose about the fist, not much of a result. Spawn turned it over, got it back. <laughs> That's a magician's act. It has been a quarter of errors. All the kangaroos and young Hale takes the mark. Getting close to half time. The ruse by two points. Whitnell chugging after Petri. Be about the best way of describing it. Colbert. Wanting a bit of tip for tap there. He gave away the 50 to Livingston a moment ago. Colbert not happy with anything he sees at the moment. Now threads it down the flank. Throw in. Still outside the Ruse 50. They lead by two points late in the second term. Beaumont towards the line. And will beat Motlock. No, will play by Shannon Motlock. He keeps it in. Now a chance for the Kangaroos. Can he use it? He can. Petri, no, at the stretch, couldn't quite hold on. Whitnell, who's been a steadying, steadying influence back there. Good kick oh, towards fantastic. the Fantastic. Can't take the mark. Little fumble. Allowed Stevens to get back in and tie the football up on centre wing. And in the end, and the free kick. Fantastic play by Stevens, running with the flight of the ball. What an inspiration this fella is for his side. Possession number 14. Chips out wide, Rawlings. Kangaroos looking for a way forward. Colbert has come up from half back. Back to Rawlings. Kick towards half forward. Well played by Lappin. Cut the angles. Hume in trouble. Kept his head. Well played. Murphy. Now Lappin. Looking at a very open forward line. In fact, so open there's no one there for Carlton. But he finds somehow for Vola in amongst four Kangaroos. In his attacking 50, and Brendan Tavola on the eve of half time for a chance to put the Blues back in front. Well, terrific play by Matty Lappin there. He got the spoil on, he followed up, but more importantly, his kick was spot on to Brendan Tavola, who was on a week. Three goals won this evening for the 22 year old. And what a transformation! over Brendan Favola in season 2003. He really looks as though he wants to play football. And he's got a lot of talent, there's no question about that. Chance here from 50 metres to put the Blues in front. He's a thumping kick. Comes in, has it got the carry? It has! Cut 
Shelton back in front. So finally, Carlton get the reward of some great effort, and they're jubilant. They all go to Brendan Favola. And a great performance when at times in that first half they looked as though they might just fall a bit behind the kangaroos. They kept fighting, and Steve. They lead by four points at half time, but the way they played, that they should be perhaps three or four goals in. They should, and I think that goal's pretty important to the outca outcome of this game. We see uh, Harvey on screen there, believes that he's being tagged at the moment. Uh, Dave is, is going to him, and uh, there's been also Wiggins has had a crack at him, but uh, that goal's so important for the Blues. They've worked so hard to get the ball inside their 50, and Favola's ended up putting the Blues in front going into half time. And they head towards the rooms with that perky look of a team that believes it might be on the way to somewhere good. Calvin by four points at half time against the Kangaroos. for a daily dose of footy? You better believe it! Then check out this lineup. I say it, but I don't believe it! Get your AFL fix all summer long with every game from 2001. Unbelievable! 2002. Unbelievable! 2003. Surely he couldn't for 48. And 2004. Oh, you won't see better than that! Every game from the past four years all summer on Fox Footy Channel. Have you heard the latest? Wherever and however you spend your time, find out what's happening on and off screen with your monthly listings and entertainment guide. This month, he conquered Hollywood, now he's conquering the ancient world. An exclusive interview with Colin Farrell on Playing Alexander. We reflect on 100 years of the Oz Open and look to the future with Fox Sports Active. New series, movie premieres, music events, we've got 2005 covered. Your entertainment and listings magazine. If you haven't got it, you're just not getting it. Johnson, the backward step. The slice around Bork move was brilliant. The driving ball for Dye oh, oh, What a hang! That is a classic. That is an Anzac Day highlight. So it's Carlton by four points. Kangaroos going in three and one. Carlton one and three. It's a game Carlton can ill afford to lose and a victory to the Roos would really set them up. And still, despite the fact that they're trailing, the Roos have five of the top six ranked players. And that makes nine, nine. of the top dozen. Extraordinary. Plenty of ball usage there. And uh, we see Sinclair there has had a tremendous start to this game with 17 disposals. And the former great Rue sits on the Carlton bench as the second half gets underway. Hickmott in the centre square. Third quarter underway. French gets it down. Jones just scrambles a kick out wide. Stevens is first there. He has support out wide. Grant, who is dominant in the second term, kicks inside attacking 50. Almost the mark to Morell. At ground level, Carlton. A chance. Wiggins. McKay. Uses Camparelli, now Thornton needs to find a target on. McCauley was pushed in the back, and he will get the free kick. Jonathan McCormick. Very good young player. He's really shone in season 2003 for the, for the Blues. Bullahan couldn't quite hold on. French, Prentagast. Kick inside, attacking 50. Where's Favola? Got hands to it. Couldn't complete the mark. What? Under pressure. Make peace. Raw oh, thought about going back inside. Decided against it. Stevens. Colbert back to Stevens. Sets him a task. He ducked his head. No free kick there. McCormick. Handball. Didn't have enough on it. He gets a second chance. Scrambles it towards Hickmott. At the back. Make peace. Just hoists it high, close to the line. Murphy, in any case, free kick to the blue. Yes, it was one or the other. The boundary umpire ruled it was out before he marked it. And uh, now the artificial turf is causing problems. <laughs> Plenty of kangaroos there. Golly, 
It's an ugly start to the half. We've had 90 seconds of pretty forgettable football. You just wondered whether all the Kangaroos players knew that that was going to get to the hot spot. And uh, it was a huge cue of Kangaroos against one or two Carlton players. All. Umpire Margetts indicating his exit path. Porter and French. Stevens under almost every pack at the moment. And another ball up now inside Carlton's 50. Just one significant move Dean Lady has made. He's put young Hale to centre half forward. Lance Whitmore is now picking him up. Bounce. French, Porter, beats him this time. Murphy, little toe poke is effective from Makepeace. Temporelli is first there. Boundary line in the end wins out. Brendan Favola kicked the goal right on half time to give the Blues the lead for the second time only in the match. After they certainly controlled general play in that second term. French death knock down to Camparelli who scrambles it around the corner. Chance for Hickmott, ball close to the line. Colbert, clever. Scrambled the kick in the end. Brown did it well. He came to meet it hard. Now Harvey sets Makepeace away. Whitnell has to commit himself. He does, but Hale got him out of the whale. Wayne Makepeace now runs towards attacking 50. He'll get around Lappin. Oh, this will be a sensational goal if he can kick it. He misses. Gee, what a run from Troy Makepeace. Well, it was, wasn't it? He had to uh, confront Lance Whitnell. And he didn't shirk the issue. He took the ball straight on and deserved better than that. Whitnell receives from Murphy. Kick is hugging the boundary line so tightly that he's turned it over. Now Porter. The former blue. French comes across him. Does well. And Favola has an open forward line here. Well done, Watt. Daniel, uh, rather, Shannon Motlop off to make peace, working his way back to the other half of the ground. And it's a free kick to the ruse. Stevens wants to break. The umpire insists that it comes back. Grant's ball. Carlton by three points. Lovely pass. Simpson. And that's a beautiful centering kick. McKay's spoils have been unerring tonight. Ray oh, from Wiggins. Well played oh. by the young blue, but a tremendous smother. From Corey Jones, who actually applied the shepherd a couple of minutes earlier that gave Makepeace free passage. He's doing some one percenters. That's a great Good. smother. And uh, Wiggins, just before that, was very courageous on his attack on the ball. Boundary throw in. It's been tight and tough in this third term. French decisively. McCormick putting his body in. Prendergast. Scrambles it towards the wing. Chance for Makepeace again. He's recovered from his long run. Grant. Now Sinclair. Good hands inside. Shannon Motlop. Look out. Great tackle coming from Fisher. Oh, he's been called to play on. Motlop now. Kicks to a vacant goal square. Whitnell getting back. He got a touch to it right on the goal line. Well, what did you think of that, Steve? Well, it was a 50-50, and I think the, the umpire the again. Well, he's got his got his jumper, yep. and he's he's hitting the ball in the air. I'm not too sure whether that is a throw or it is play on. I'd say fair enough on the basis that he lost control of it rather than actually throwing it, and uh, he was able to get rid of the tackler. Now Carlton rebound French to Prendergast, and again Favola has space in which to work. Oh, nearly. Push. Push. Yes, there's a push. Watt's not happy, but it looked to be there. And Favola, who has the kicking boots on now, can line up for his fifth. Well, why as a defender, I think he can consider himself a little unlucky there, What It uh, happens often in a game. Sometimes they pick it up, sometimes they don't. Never picked it up when you were playing. <laughs> I'd like to argue that point. <laughs> <laughs> Favola might give you time as he goes through the routine. Chance for Carlton to extend the lead here. He's kicked 4-1. And when he's hot, he's normally pretty hot. 
Kicking from 30, no mistake, Carlton by eight. Favola has five, and this is a major contribution. And we just see the free kick once again on screen here. Favola jumps early, and, uh, oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's something there. But you're right, Steve, there, there is some inconsistency. And uh, it was certainly there, but it's not always paid. But Favola has five goals. Carlton with their biggest lead of the match. Eight points. And survived an onslaught in the early part of the quarter from the Kangaroos. McCormick has made a difference. Now Murphy. Here they go again. Favola wants it kick long. Kick towards half four. And almost the mark. In fact, it's paid by Fisher. And Steve, we talked during the break about Fisher and his ability to leap. And he's not a, he's not a short player. He's uh, about 6'2", 6'3", in the old language. And he really jumped there like a spring hill jack. And I think that's where he's catching a few opposition sides out at the moment. He does play tall. A little bit like, I guess, for Carlton supporters, that Richard Dennis type some years ago. But uh, he was a late pick in the draft, but uh, has impressed early in the season. He's a, he's a real live wire. And Brad Fisher has kicked four goals in his debut season from directly in front. That's what confronts him. The kick is perfect. Carlton further in front. So the Blues have kicked the only two goals of the third term. And uh, some smiles emerging on my co-commentators, Stephen Silvani and Tim Lane. I wouldn't say that, but uh, well done. Justin Murphy there got the ball out of the middle and got it long to the hot spot where Fisher was waiting. A lovely strong mark by the youngster. And a good straight kick. Good finish. Concerns in the kangaroo box. They had a trip west last week. We're overrun by Fremantle. They might be tiring into the second half of this match. Stevens, captain courageous to try and lift them. And Harvey, and Stevens again. Can he nail it? No, he can't. The margin still 13. Terrific play by Stevens. Though. The kick wasn't great, but he knew that he had to lift there for his side and got that ball out of the middle, followed the kick up, but uh, unlucky not to score that goal. Matthew Lappin at fullback. As Fisher comes from the ground limping, replaced by Livingston. Great mark. Carlton away again. It was taken by French Murphy. Camperelli back to Murphy. The Blues playing with renewed confidence. Three bounces. Now he squares it up late. Runners everywhere. French has made a difference. Just hoists it high towards the goal square. McKernan! Can we take the mark? Free kick. Play the Carlton Bowlers! Kick six! Brendan Favala. What a start. I'm not sure that it was he that earned the free kick. I think it was McKernan. As we watch it again, Camparelli just waiting and hanging on, and Murphy being able to use the ball effectively. And the, the beauty of Murphy when he got the ball, he actually carried it with some speed, but we just see the free kick there on McKernan. I think it was young, young Baird, but, uh, well, that's Favola's fifth goal, and he is running hot. That's the bad news for Carlton. The good news is they've kicked three goals in this quarter and kicked to a 19-point lead. Brendan Favola has 19 for the year. And this is a reformed character, a transformed character. French doing some good things for Carlton inside. And the Blues escape. No, the umpire initially seemed to call play on, but from off the ball... It looks like there's a free kick against young Wiggins, who's playing on Harvey. So Harvey's ball just fought to the centre for the Kangaroos, who sorely need one. They kicked the first couple of goals of the match. It's been 9-4 to four since. Whitnell's back an inviting sight for Morell, but he went early. And it's starting to all come back for Andrew McKay. Now McCormick. 
from Camparelli. Well weighted kick. Wiggins. Carlton dangerous again. Dropping in half distance for him. French. Camparelli just couldn't load up there, but he delivers perfectly to McKernan, who has a chance against his former club to really do some damage. Steve French is making a difference in the midfield, linking up, and uh, he's doing extremely well. He is, and uh, you take that uh, passage of play back, you've got to take it back to the Whitmore spoil and the way McKay cleaned the ball up and provided the drive out of the Carlton half-back line. He's playing his best game for a long time, Andy McKay. It's been fantastic tonight. Corey McKernan, who has missed a couple of weeks with another troublesome knee. Kangaroos ringing the changes. Harding and Jones both off. King coming off the bench. Jones under the blood rule. As McKernan lines them up. Hasn't had a lot of the footy. But this is a big kick. Carlton lead by 19. They lead by 20. If it had gone through... It would have been a serious miscarriage of justice. Had a bit of a wobble to it, that kick, Chris o. A bit. <laughs> Christy, you've got news on Brad Fisher. Yeah, I don't think we'll see Brad Fisher for the rest of the game. He came off limping before. The physios have been with him, checking his right knee. He seems to be in a bit of pain, and now he's gone to sit at the back of the bench. Spectacular mark taken by Simpson. Sets Baird away. Now Daniel Motlock, Mr. the mark he should have taken. Well played by Hale. Clayton, glad a little kick around the body. Mark taken by Harvey, and that should be 50 metres. It is. Against Simon Wiggins, the player clearly took the mark, and you can't tackle and bury a player once they've taken the mark. Spot on there, Chris O, but uh, young Wiggins a little bit frustrated here. Takes the mark, and Wiggins buries him, and that is 50 metres. So Brent Harvey, who's kicked a couple of goals, will bring the margin back to 14 points. The kangaroos need one. He pops it through. Margin back to 14 points in favour of the Blues. So a much-needed goal by the kangaroos. They worked it pretty well, Steve, uh, when they got it forward. Clever little kick from Clayton was able to uh, find Harvey. And more, more importantly... Uh, we see the Simpson mark here. That was from the kick out, but we just saw Brent Harvey in screen there. He ran all the way down to their inside their forward 50. Terrific running, and uh, he deserves to kick that goal and came from a lovely mark. Kangaroos stay in touch. Margin 14 points. Good bounce by Darren Morris. Porter just overshot with the hand pass. Beaumont for Carlton. Camparelli. In fact, it was uh, Prendergast. Good steal. Daniel Motlock to Simpson. And good delivery. Here come the Roos. Jones is 45 out directly in front. And it's been their two senior players in Simpson and Stevens that have answered the challenge in this last three or four minutes. Great delivery. Big kick. Corey Jones, good contributor. It looks as though he caught one in the nose at some stage for his trouble. That's an awful kick. And Whitman is able to break away like a young colt to Camparelli. Lovely ball to the wing. Favola running under it. Grant. Not good. Thornton. And Carlton with men running inside. Comfortable clearance for Waite. Waite looks to Prendergast, who's made some space between wing and half forward. McCormick demanded the football, got it. Hoist it high towards McKenna. He's got to beat a couple in front. Good, strong mark taken by Archer. It's Archer's mark and or free kick. And he had to stand his ground there, Glenn Archer. And he did as we've come to expect. Kernan wasn't given much of a chance there. He had to beat three. Just wearing one glove. But I'd have two on next week. Where are you? 
Searching kick. Morella, big leap. Couldn't hold on. Petri, no. Petri's been paid the mark in front. Just since the Kangaroos just working their way back into this game. Token effort from Murphy on the mark. Petri pumps it long. Harvey almost. Carlton all at the fourth. Camberelli wasn't quite aware of the forthcoming Kangaroos player. Shannon Motlover thumping kick goalward. It bounces. Oh, it yes. Harvey to Daniel Motlop. And that is an incredible goal. The kick from Shannon Motlop bounced up on a 10. And Harvey, running hard as he's done all night, got there and was able to somehow thread a handball through to Daniel Motlop, who was waiting eagerly on the goal line. And the Kangaroos with the last two goals, and the margin all of a sudden back to eight points. And resulted in a tackle by a North Melbourne play, the pressure that was put on. But ever with this, that is smart play. Knew that if he took the possession of the ball, that he'd run through the points, but he knocked it back. And North, sorry, the Kangaroos were able to kick a goal. That was Wayne Harms. Maybe Carlton supporters will go the goal umpire. Kangaroos are right back in this. Just eight points in it. Important takeaway this. Camparelli parking the body over the ball. You're given a little more license and freedom in those centre contests, it seems, than in other parts of the ground. Next goal is a big one. Blues looked as though they might have broken the ruse, but not so. Porter and French, arms flying everywhere. Kangaroos ball. Flow of the game with them at the moment. In fact, it's not the Ruckman that have uh, provided the free kick. It's Jones, and Shannon Motlop again is dangerous. He is a lovely long left foot kick. Petri is there. Now, is it a mark or a free? The mark is paid to Daniel Motlop at point blank range. Well, Daniel Motlop... the Cracker Brothers. Reminiscent of the Cracker yeah, Brothers. Well, we just see Daniel Motlop flying with the ball. We see Matty Lappin there. Hasn't played much in defence. Wait for this kick. Motlop second, and the margin is two points. Well, we, we just saw that replay. Yet. Daniel Motlop taking that mark, but... Lappin is playing on Motlop. We just see off the screen here, Matthew Lappin just failed to get some touch, some body on Daniel Motlop. And one, you either have to take his line, or two, you've got to fly with your opponent. And Matthew Lappin failed to do that on that occasion. Two goals to Motlop in a minute. Kangaroo's back. So, Daniel Motlop with some assistance from his brother up the ground. He's kicked a couple of goals. And the Kangaroos fighting their way back. They've kicked the last three goals, and here they go again. Inside attacking 50. Petrick forced a punch. McKay has been sensational. Knocks it towards Camparelli. Took a while to find the handle, but he had plenty of time. Whitnell thumps it long. Sinclair almost. Well played by Spawn. Gives his forwards a chance for Vol. A great fist from Archer. Just in the nick of time. Simpson, who's been fantastic all night. Clayton made a contest. Spawn. Now Hume, slick little handball. Camparelli, McCormick. Camparelli again. Hickmott in the contest. Archer almost. Kangaroos are playing very well in their defensive zone for Vola. Uh, forces Archer over the line with the football. And a boundary throw in. Baird and Hickmott getting involved. We see uh, Archer's effort. The last three or four contests Archer has been in, he has been absolutely terrific. Hickmott taking it right up to Glenn Archer. French looking to get it to the back. Baird, Shannon Motlop, who's been prominent in this third quarter. Raking left foot again, again to his brother, Daniel. He's got some talent. Daniel Motlop drills the pass, looking for Morell. He was held high. Is there a free kick? No, boundary throwing. Booze from the Kangaroo supporters as Archer and Hickmont continue with it. A couple of tough nuts there. There's reasonably hard men on the football field. Kangaroos looking to wrest the lead from the Blues. They've kicked the last three. Morel to Ruck here against French. Lappin tied up. Kangaroos hold it in. 
Carlton breaking away with three quick goals in this quarter. Half time at Amy Stadium with Port Adelaide. Five points in front. Roos still dangerous. Brown just couldn't get the hand pass away. So another ball up, still just inside the Kangaroos 50. And Carlton's defence under pressure. The Motlops suddenly playing like latter-day Cracker Brothers. French and Morel, each getting a share of it. Thornton, short sure hands, and kicking to space. Hume leads the race, and the bounce is not too bad for him. Well run down, though. Shannon Motlop in the thick of it again. Well, you've got to, you've got to admire the pressure that both these teams have put on each other in this game and we just see Motlop there, the chase and tackle on Darren Hume and Hume not well, lucky not to give away a free kick there because he put Daniel Motlop down on his pants Murphy was strong at the football well played, then overruns it, McKay backs him up, Murphy good sweeping handball to accommodate Wiggins, Wiggins who uses Camparelli, the Blues away Camparelli with a couple of bounces where will he go, he should kick a goal from here on its way, he's missed. He needed that, the Blues. After kicking the first three goals of this third quarter, the Kangaroos have kicked the last three. And as we look at Scott Camparelli, after missing that golden opportunity, margin, three points in favour of the Blues. And a few curses uttered tonight. There's been some wasteful football from both teams. Harvey, half distance to Grant. Petri. Hasn't been able to uh, mark the football tonight. Has taken scarcely a mark. We see Mark Porter there. He is the man dropping into the Carlton forward 50. And the free kick downfield against Glen Archer on Adrian Hickmott. They've been wrestling for about the last five or ten minutes. And this time the umpire has awarded a free kick to Adrian Hickmott. Well, how often <laughs> the guy that, uh, the ret retaliator, gets a free kick against them. And a battle scar on Adrian Hickmott's neck. Take more than that to worry him. And he kicks the steadying goal for the Blues, who lead by nine points. As that was all happening, Kuta Fides was heading to the bench for the Blues, uninjured, just being interchanged. But Glenn Archer will be we just disappointed with that outcome. And Chris, I'm just not too sure about these free kicks. I mean, the umpires just seen what it's gone on. He's seen the shove, the first shove that Hickbot's given to Archer. And yes, he did grab him by the ankle, but uh, there was a fair bit going on before Absolutely that. right. Absolutely right. And... The two gentlemen concerned just comparing notes. Casual night. Well, the Blues needed that. Just edges them out. Nine points in front now. French, who's done very well. Prendergast thumps it long and wide. Sinclair did very well. Ball bounced, about to bounce over his head. He was able to control it and deliver perfectly to Grant. Kangaroos just ahead in the handballs. Kick towards Harvey, did brilliantly. Edge Wiggins underneath the football, he uses it. King, and he spent some time on the interchange bench, uses Shannon Motlop, who's been devastating in this third quarter. Got a reprieve when Rocker withdrew from the kangaroo lineup. He is a thumping kick, he'll need to kick at 60 metres. Got too close to the man on the mark. Contest, in from the side, Petri almost. Blocks it towards King, who's dangerous. Now a chance for Jones. Kick around the body to the goal square is wide. And fisted through by Wiggins. And a behind only to the Kangaroos. Eight points the margin. Tight quarter this. Camparelli having a big term, has had 10 possessions, not counting those kick-ins. McKay to Lappin, now Hume. 
And the Blues looking to break it open. Favola the target. Hickmott there as well. Archer weighted down. Sinclair. Archer for another go. Well scragged by Favola. Hickmott for another go. Tough footy. Wait. Good umpiring too as it was allowed to go. McKernan sprays it. And Baird uncontested in the back pocket. Kangaroo's turn. Sinclair. Big possession earner through the night. Jess Sinclair picked up 30 possessions in these sides last played. Made to be the best on the ground that day. He's had a pretty good start to season 2003. Big pack of players. McKernan, strong attempt. Couldn't quite hold on. Hit the ground hard too, Corey McKernan. He's OK. Back in the side tonight. A valuable part, of course. Best and fairest winner. Now, as we look at a little bit more of Archer and Hickmott, little knock on the side of the head. Ball at half forward for the Blues. Look numbers. Wait, good handball. Hume, can he use it on the lead? Brilliantly kicked to pull the hand. Gee, that was a great pass from Hume. Assessed the situation, and the pass was absolutely perfect. Pull the hand didn't have to break stride and an opportunity to put the Blues further in front. And it was a great kick, but it was a clever little handball by Wade early on in the piece to, just to get it out to Hume, but the execution <laughs> of the kick there by Hume, and he just wounded home, it, didn't he? Oh, he did. He just crouched down, willing and hoping that it was going to hit Houlihan on the chest. He didn't need to worry. And Ryan Houlihan, chance from about 40 metres. That's what he's... What confronts him? Oh, the kick is perfect. Carlton further in front. They lead by 14 points. Ryan Houlihan, a perfect kick. And they had numbers of that uh, around the ball at centre-half forward. You mentioned the handball from weight, and they're combining pretty well at the moment, Steve. Yes, and we'll just see here the contest in the air. The ball spills out to weight. That clever little handball there set up this play, and Ryan Houlihan is able to get on the end of it. And he kicks his first goal of the game. Carlton extend the lead again. It's out to 14. Porter and French. Hume, who set up that last goal, having a good turn. Favola pushing and shouting at the back and then collecting. Tremendous smother, though. I think from Makepeace and the Kangaroos are off the hook when it looked perilous. Colbert nicely for Stevens. Here comes McKay. That fist has been like a hammer tonight. Yes, he's had a superb game, but if we just take the play back to Makepeace, this was critical. Favola had the free shot at goal, or he had Houlihan over the top, and that is a very important smother for the Kangaroos. Houlihan was just waiting at the top of the goal square. Didn't get to him. Shannon Motlop. Whitnell knocked it the wrong way. Chance now for the Kangaroos. At half for Harding. He's been quiet. McKay's killed him all night, but from 35, he kicks a goal. Margin eight points. Well, Lee Harding's been soundly beaten all night. Has spent some time on the bench, admittedly, but he was able to find some space. Good chain of, chain of handballs by the Kangaroos. Simpson involved again as we watch it. Motlop's been outstanding. He got it clear. Whitnell, that was an interesting knock on. Stevens, the captain. Simpson, and eventually he was able to get it to Harding. And the Kangaroos draw to within eight points. And in this game, well, looks like it's going to go right down to the wire. We're close to three-quarter time. The Blues by eight points. Long night in the coaches' boxes. Lee Harding, great conversion rate. Three kicks, two goals. McKay just gets it out of the ruck. McCormick. Murphy now. Well done. Now, can someone snare it out of the air? It'll be a kangaroo if they do. Houlihan, dangerous. Wait, well can done. it spent? And what knocked it away? Surrounded, though. Hickmott to McCormick. Carlton still with a chance. Favola for number seven.
This could be his biggest knock since the last millennium. Oh, what a terrific goal. There are some blokes that can kick a football and uh, bring Brendan for ball. Well, he's one of them. We saw a terrific effort by Watt, but uh, quick hands for Violet. Didn't have to think. He couldn't look at the goals, but that's just football now to know where the goals are. Put the ball under his boot, and what a fantastic snap. There's been some excitement everywhere. And the left arm's very sore at the moment. <laughs> what a goal from Brennan for Violet. He missed an easy opportunity in the first quarter but has not missed since. He's kicked 7-1 in an outstanding display of full forward work. Petri, Hume knocks it forward. Colbert sets Harvey away. Kangaroos need one. Whitnock couldn't hold on. Now a chance for Petri at the back from 15 metres. Brilliant smother. That's fantastic play from Lappin. The Kangaroos are still alive, but not for long. The Carlton offence, ferocious. And a bounce 20 metres from the kangaroo goal. Now let's have a look at this mother again. Petri who had taken the ruck knock, and there's Lappin committing himself. Fantastic piece of play. Well, often goals are very important, but uh, those type of smothers are just as, as important. Kangaroos need one. Close to three-quarter time. Harvey close to the line. Wiggins right on his back and over. In fact, down on the full. Off Beaumont's boot. So Harvey a chance. Brent Harvey has kicked three and has run hard as he always does. You can see the time there. 42 seconds left in the third turn. The Blues lead by 14 points. What can he conjure up here? Brent Harvey, check side kick. This is, in fact, this by a long way, strikes in for a behind. Margin 13 points. Beaumont arrived and I think just got his boot in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was actually it was a bump ball. Initially. It, it yeah. was a bump ball. So a bit unlucky there, the Blues. Yes, the third umpire <laughs> wouldn't have given it out. Camparelli to Beaumont, who now has his chance from about the same spot. Low percentage kick from Harvey, you'd have to think, from that far out to try and bend it back. It really needed to be absolute precision. Now Whitnell. And somewhere behind the behind posters of the goal posters, Wiggins and Camparelli wiggling his bottom as he does when he really starts to wind up. Spawn, McCormick in the dying seconds, goes for broke. He's wide and he misses everything. It's the Kangaroos ball and that scoreline will be it at the last change. Carlton by 13 points. Tremendous struggle through that corner, a freer scoring one. Carlton came out with three goals. The Roos responded with three of their own. In the end, the Blues kicked six to four. And 13 points is a useful break. It is a useful break. This, this game is swinging from toe to toe. And uh, certainly we see that man on screen, Brendan Favola. He's kicked the seven goals. But uh, what a sensational game it's been. There have been a number of fantastic plays out there. But uh, really, I believe it's going to go down to the wire. So Carlton lead by 13 points at three-quarter time. Glenn Archer and Adrian Hickmott typifying, personifying the spirit in which this game is being fought out. Sit down to some refined intellect. Would you like your daughter to go out with an AFL footballer? As long as it's not for Vola, I'd be happy. <laughs> I was the last of the non-thinking coaches. <laughs> Drop the old man all summer on Fox Footy Channel. 60 seconds to go. Mooney to Hunt. Pick it up with an inspirational smother. Lane.
Wasn't quite aware of the forthcoming Kangaroos player. Shannon Motlove, a dumping kick goal. It bounces. Oh, 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 to Daniel Motlove. And that is an incredible goal. Great quarter for the Motlops, but Carlton coming out of it in front by 13 points. Big contribution from Favola. David King has disappeared, spent a lot of the term on the bench. Scott Camparelli had double-figure possessions in that quarter. Survival of the fittest now, Sos? Well, I think it might be. There are certainly this game's been played at a furious pace and a number of errors, but a lot of pressure out there. Interesting to have a look at some of those who uh, have been used sparingly by their coaches. Dean Laidley with uh, the Motlops up his sleeve, in a sense. And Anthony Stevens, only 72 of 92 minutes. Well, they've got plenty of run there with Clayton Motlop, oh, the two Motlops and Stevens, and I guess they've got the tall inhale that can either go into the ruck or go up forward. Carlton, on the other hand, with uh, Barnaby French, relatively fresh, playing a big third quarter. And also uh, McCormick had a good term, and, and Hume too. Yeah, well, Davies and McCormick, the two running type players, along with Darren Hume. So, certainly some fresh legs left with the Blues and uh, every possible chance in this final term. Down to Christy Malthouse on the boundary. Well, Dennis Pagan remained in the coach's box for about two minutes before he came down to address his players, and then he was very, very calm and trying to keep his players calm as well. Now, there'll be a man down on the bench in this last term with Brad Fisher off with a knee injury, but they are going to need all the firepower they can get. Both teams are. It'll probably come down to who has the freshest legs in the last term because it has been quite a warm night and, in fact, a very humid night. So it will come down to just who has those fresh legs in the final term. Thanks, Christy, and we're about to find out. Carlton by 13 points lose this game. The Blues are one and four, and perhaps already a couple of games out of the eight, and it would set up the Kangaroos beautifully. But Carlton go into this last stanza with their noses in front and perhaps favoured to score their second win of the season. Margin, 13 points. Can the Blues finish off? Good bounce from umpire Mackenzie Porter. Just favoured him slightly. Simpson hacks it from the centre. Chase on. Porter made good ground and ended up with the football. Has dragged it back in and then a bounce. Thought for a moment umpire Mackenzie was going to penalise Porter for dragging it back underneath him. Looking forward to this final quarter. There's been some mistakes, but it's been also very entertaining. Stevens. Hoist it high. Simpson with commitment almost. Couldn't quite hold on. Stevens again following up. The dynamic Harvey. Chip short. The kick was poor. Intended for Petrie. Gave Whitnell a chance. Wiggins. Bear the spectacular leap. Couldn't hold on. Simpson got it from Porter. Just chips out wide. Stevens controls it inside the line. Just wobbles it towards full four with a spiral top. Pedro Petrie couldn't hold on. He would have been perhaps better, Steve, to try to find a target rather than just blazing away. Yeah, he may have, but didn't have much on on that occasion. Just looking at uh, two of the Kangaroos forwards, Petri needs to get involved in the play. The other one's Morell. Both been very quiet plays for the Kangaroos. Good option by Murphy. A good play as McKay's done enough to be awarded the mark. Murphy playing on and then with his kicking power able to hit McKay almost out on the wing. So a comfortable clearance for the Blues. Lappin giving him an offer in the middle. And that's where he goes. And uh, he's been a good player down the back again, Lappin. Here's McKernan having to go the spoil in the end. Houlihan, ever dangerous inside the 50. Here's a lovely kick at goal. And that's a bumper. The Blues by 18 points. second goal, both in the second half, and he really, in the old language of the game, knows where the sticks are. Well, he does. He's had a fairly quiet game, Hallahan. We just saw the contest that McKernan provided there, but uh, this is what he's such... Well, this is what he's so good at. Uh, he's kicking for goal, and he can kick him from anywhere, and on this occasion, he kicks it on his right foot and doesn't let the Blues down. Well, he rose to the occasion in Carlton's only win of the season against the Bombers. And then he certainly made an early impact in this final term. Lappin creating from half-back. French and Porter. French decisively. Murphy. 
Ball wide to half forward. Houlihan leading in the race, can't control it. Boundary throw in. Ryan Houlihan, just the nine touches. And he's taken the ball inside 55 times. Blues into attack, Grant. Simpson, clever little toe poke. Shannon Motlock on the up to bear with it a throw. It was umpire Morris set. Carlton free kick. Lappin, whose game has been transformed under Dennis Pagan, playing most of his football behind the centre. And uh, it's produced new dimensions. Favola arrived, but was never going to mark it. Stevens levering it out. Nowhere for Sinclair to go. Well done, Shannon Motlop. Unfortunately, his uh, red oh, boots lost their purchase, but he's producing magic tonight. Now, that was a magic kick. It was 15.01 metres, and it hit the target. Sinclair to nobody. It's Lappin. He's got it on a string at the moment, and that is a well-placed kick for McKernan. Edged under it by Colbert. Make peace can clean up. But hemmed in by Hume. Just looking at Adam Simpson, he's had 22 touches for the game. Huge job for Prendergast at the moment, who's doing a run with roll on Adam Simpson. Well, Lappin is a loose player across half-back for the Blues. Comes to Hume, out of the pack somehow, towards Houlihan. He couldn't quite get there. Chance for the Kangaroos. What just decides to run it over. So the Carlton break is extended. Now, that's a 19 points. Kick comes in. Stevens just. He's worked tirelessly tonight, the captain. Great chase from him. Couldn't quite. Stevens was able to arch the back. Kick towards half forward. Baird has run from fullback. Johnny Baird from 50. A thumping kick. It's home. So Baird has kicked the goal and has given the Kangaroos against the run of play some hope. His first goal of the year and the margin is cut to 13 points. And the carrying of the ball by Anthony Stevens there really did give Baird the option who ran down the ground from full back and more importantly kicking this goal for the Kangaroos. The unlikely source, John Baird, keeps the Kangaroos afloat. Porter the better of that one. Wiggins in the way with a big job on Harvey at the moment. He's a feisty young customer. Here's Cooter man. That is a probing kick. What? Hickmott. Spawn. Now McCormick. Favola loose. He's dangerous. Touch that might stay in for McKernan. Bang! He would enjoy that. And, well, Brendan Favola, he actually, I think, went for goal. And uh, I think he was very happy that it uh, was partly smothered and actually landed. It did. He went for goal. <laughs> they were a bit lucky in the end, but... McKernan, presence of mind to keep his composure and kick the goal. And Brendan Favola, seven goals won. And perhaps could have had his eighth there. So the Blues, they're pretty happy. 19 points in the margin. And at the moment, certainly, they're answering every challenge. France has been fantastic. Taken this time by Shannon Grant from 55. A low raking drop punt is a goal. Kangaroos not lying down. What a response from Shannon Grant from outside 50. And the margin, just when Carlton get a bit of breathing space, the Kangaroos hit back. Well, it was a great reply, wasn't it? They get the ball out of the, hit, out of the middle here, and more importantly, they had the centre half ball clean away so Grant could continue to run the ball and he put this goal through to put the Kangaroos back in the ball game.
the Blues by 13 points. Physical exchange in the ruck between uh, Porter and French. Well done, Murphy. Just couldn't quite take the footy with him. Prendergast. And Carlton with a two-on-one here. Hickmott and McCormick. Archer into his back. No doubt about that. And it hasn't been the best of nights for Glenn Archer playing his first game of the year. Just hasn't had his normal feel. Who's he barracking for? I'm not too sure, but uh, you did mention Glenn Archer there, Tim. Uh, always difficult to come back and play at the intensity this game has been played at tonight. Of course, Glenn Archer missing the first four games of this season. And he's come up against a player that has been in form in Adrian Hickmott. Who had the wobbles in front of goal early, but kicked one in the third quarter. This to make it really tough for the Roos. From 50, that's a good kick. Again, the Blues extend the lead. They look to have the answers. Yeah, they do look to, as though they do have the answers. Uh, a little bit reckless there by Glenn Archer, but uh, the Kangaroos have fought back all night. This game isn't over, but that goal was a very important one for the Blue Boys. So Carlton back out to a 19 point advantage. French. So poked by Simpson, who's tried so hard all night. Make peace, Simpson. Now Stevens. Good chase from Lappin. He uses Daniel Motlop out wide. Hard up against the line. Tries to get away from Beaumont and Carr and is penalised. Well, did it smart here? Beaumont just corralled Motlop to the boundary. Didn't allow him to ball him. And uh, you just see there, just took too long to get rid of the ball. Long kick, big pack, Kudafidis in French. French almost, Kudafidis, good little handball. McKay, just off the side. What in trouble. Good tackle from Vavola. Handball, hoping. McCormack commits his body, so does Archer. Now a chance for Whitmill. That was a little inside of the boot kick. Lands with Stevens. Stevens kicks to half for McKay in the way. He's been absolutely outstanding tonight, Andrew McKay. The 10 on playing on. Just puts Thornton under the pump a bit. Well, they need to be good here, the Blues. McKay goes into assist, but it's all kangaroos. Grant, handball, Jones, goal. And they're the sort of errors that come. Well, it's cost Carlton so far this season, and for Carlton fans' sake, I hope that's not one that costs them tonight. Yeah, well, it, there have been a number of errors tonight, but it gets back down to pressure and being able to make the right selection when you're under pressure. You've got to take your hat, your hat off to this Kangaroos team. They just keep fighting back, and they keep answering the challenge. They've had one Saturday night thriller at this venue a couple of weeks ago. This might be another. Still the Kangaroos close enough. They won't go away. Porter and French again. They're going to have bruised bodies tonight. Straight through Murphy's legs. He has another go. Kudafidis outstripped there by Stevens. Harvey and Wiggins have been hard at it against each other. Well done, Wiggins. He stood the test tonight. French, but straight to Rawlings. Plenty of time left. Kangaroos just 13 points down. Make peace. And he decides to go backwards into the corridor. And Colbert, who has three on two here, but his two are, uh, three aren't very well placed. Yeah. There's a push and a Carlton free kick. Pull the hand. Quite lucky to get that free kick all ahead. Certainly was. Whitnell's run from half back creatively. Lance Whitnell. Favola breaks for him. He decides to have a casual bounce, which threw the lead out. Hoisted high. Hickmott. Make peace, though, at the four. Sinclair. 
Brown is free. Sinclair runs with the football as McCormick comes from the ground. He's got the centre wing. Raking kick towards half forward. Fist from McKay again. Daniel Motlop has it, ties it up, and a bounce. This time forward for the Kangaroos, Daniel Motlop in the screen. 13 points in Kyle McKenzie. Just indicating his path. Brown and Peter Feedies. Brown gets it to Harvey. Make piece of chance. He runs inside 50. A thumping left foot kick is across the face and 3 4 behind. So it brings the margin back to an even two goals in favour of the Blues. Adrian Hickmott on the bench. Just a couple of changes being made. Hickmott's come up, been replaced by Livingston, and Archer's also come off the ground. He's been replaced by Clayton. A couple of tired boys out there at the moment. Crowd of just over 38,000, and they are seeing a beauty. Lappin stepped out of the square. We got a view of that. He just went beyond the chalk as umpire Morris is telling him I think with his plant foot it was marginal but it's it was a, there it's a no ball so a ball up and suddenly it's in dispute and it is right in front of the kangaroos goal could the game turn on that moment seized by Thornton of Calton. The margin 11 points, but we're in the middle stages of the quarter only, and the Kangaroos are coming hard. Been the story all night. Neither side are giving up the challenge, and uh, this game's going to go to the wire. Change of kicker in it. Camparelli gets to McKay. May prove costly. That mistake. The end analysis. Lappin. Still inside defensive 50. That's what confronts him. Courage shown by Simpson. Now a chance for make peace. Loose player inside is Harding. We haven't seen him all night. Harding runs to 40 and drills it. Hits the post. Kangaroos pressing. Lee Harding. Just the four disposals. He's kicked a couple of goals. And not that time, margin, 10 points. And just at the moment, it's the Kangaroos winning the hard ball, monopolising the footy, and looking as though they could yet snatch this back after trailing for most of the second half. Camparelli the dab, McKay the shepherd, and then the long clearance. Plenty of Kangaroos there, they all flew. Well done, Porter. Brown, Stevens having a big last quarter to the hot spot. Harding with an open goal in front of him. The Kangaroos are within a kick. Lee Harding's third goal, and the margin is just four points. And if you take it back to the camp early kick out, he kicked the ball to a three-on-one contest. McKernan was all by himself. Porter fought hard for the ball. The Kangaroos were able to get the ball in long and high. And who was over the back? This man. The opportunist. Harding was able to get away from McKay and kick this goal. Well, Harding's now kicked three goals. Just six disposals. But he's making his presence felt. And McKay's been his master all night. But he still managed to hitch out three goals. Porter, Simpson, Stevens, soccering it forward the Kangaroos. Brown trying to force it forward. Kudafidis couldn't control it. We need to get it out, Thornton. Make peace. Stevens dies on the football and eventually you get a ball up. Good umpiring, letting the game go. As we look at that time clock, just over 10 minutes of actual game time remaining. Just four points to difference. Carlton got out to a 19 point advantage earlier in this quarter, but the Kangaroos have hit back. Houlihan, Gordon, cool under pressure. High, Spawn and Sinclair. Davies has to beat three of them and does. That was superb. Houlihan just had to go back for it. Uses Hume. 
Count Moana here with open territory in front of him from 40 metres. Loads up and he misses. A couple of missed opportunities down here. Would have brought the house down. Opportunities might be the result at the end. Both, both sides have missed relatively easy opportunities here on that occasion. The Kangaroos before that on a number of occasions. The terrific play by Davies. Well, the Roos played a draw here a fortnight ago. Could they do it again? Shannon Motlock, good play. Long ball down the middle. Brown, big and strong. Well tackled by Lappin. Cooter's hands haven't quite been there tonight. Grant to Jones. The Roos dangerous. An open 50. Just too far for Harding. And the ever-reliable. Andrew McKay to Murphy. Carlton out of trouble, but becoming an anxious team now. Thornton, well tackled. Took his time. Grant wrapped up. There'll be a bounce just the kangaroo side of the centre. Carlton 103, the Roos 98. And hard man Hickmott with stiff, sore legs on the bench, and the Blues would like him out there. And Steve Kuda Fides, yet to take a mark tonight. Yes, uh, struggling. Might just be time for Dennis Pagan to move Kuda Fides forward. He just looks as though he's struggling with his run, and uh, Brown doing a reasonably good job on him. Murphy has played very well tonight, Murphy, apart from a couple of early blemishes where he gave a couple of free kicks away inside the Kangaroos attacking 50, which resulted in goals, but since then, He's been fantastic. He's really committed his body. He's run hard. Been a valuable contributor. Grant has been sensational. Just stood up in the tackle. Handballed inside attacking 50. Harvey is dynamite. Can't control it this time. Wiggins slicks it out. Grant, oh, he's pushed in the back. Free kick, Shannon Grant. Free kick to Shannon Grant. And a chance to put the Kangaroos in front, which would be the first time since the 24-minute mark of the second quarter as we watch it again. Smart play here by Grant. He always knew that he was under pressure and he was going to get tackled, and he just buckled. He buckled, was, he milked the free kick. It was a bit clumsy, Prendic, though, wasn't it? He was. Prendergast just needed to have a bit more care. Shannon Grant coming up for disposal number 30. He's kicked a couple of goals and a chance to put the Roos in front. We ran a stat pre-match about the number of free kicks Carlton's defence has given away this season inside 50. Might that cost them this game? From 40 metres, it's across the face and through for a behind. So it didn't cost a goal on that occasion. Margin. Back to four points. Dean Lady, Laidley, an anxious-looking Dean Laidley. He's getting used to it. <laughs> Saturday nights at the Telstra Dome. Just another one kick result, perhaps. McKay the target, why not? Beaumont thrown over the line by Jones. Just clear of the 50. Carlton under siege. The Kangaroos with so much self-belief. French on the sidelines at the moment after rucking bravely through much of this second half. Whitnell, front position against Porter. Here's the tearaway, King, Nab, and God. He's a bit stiff. I reckon he bounced the ball before he yeah, grabbed him. The umpire was directly behind him, and I think the vision may have just been blocked a little in terms of just the timing of the bounce. He got rid of it straight away, really. He, he wasn't, and there's a 50 as well, so this becomes a big penalty on the ruse. It was a great chase by Hume. King looked like he was going to drive that ball to the top of the goal square, but Hume persisted. I think that the ruling is that if you're caught when you've bounced the ball, well, it's, it's considered holding the ball, but you would think common sense would demand that if you get rid of it straight away, if you haven't really been caught in possession, that uh, it's play on. Hume into the 50 for the Blues. Camparelli giving it up to Brown, who gives it up to Houlihan, the assassin, and Carlton have breathing space. to Ryan Houlihan and Dennis celebrates probably a diet cut. Yeah, that critical goal, this one for the boys. They just looked as though they were getting very tied up in their forward half. Houlihan here kicks his third goal 
As we said early on, he hasn't had a great game, but uh, has made the most of his opportunities. Blues by 10. So the Blues... 10, 10 points to the good, and there's the free kick against David King, and you're right, Steve, he just managed to put it down, but it doesn't matter. Goal to Carlton, French, who's been fantastic in the ruck. Prendergast knocks it forward. Cooter feeding. Now a chance for Murphy. Just scrambles the kick inside, attacking 50 for Vola. Hume out wide. Hickmott gets it from Davies. Snap from 30 metres. He's kicked it. Carlton now lead by 16 points. 24 minutes in final term. And you would think, Stephen Silvani, that the Blues will register their second win of the season. Well, two late goals, and uh, Adrian Hickman has just come out of the ground. Clever move by Dennis Pagan. He took Livingston off the ground. Hickman, he got in the right position. Quick handball by Davies. And that is a goal that just might as well, might have sealed the game. Two goals to Adrian Hickman. In fact, he's kicked three. So what a contribution he's made this evening. A couple of ex-kangaroos with an interest in Carlton. They're looking on. McKernan, Martin. Oh, and there's Pagan. Carlton with a break. Prendergast to Murphy. It's going to be hard for the Roos now. Wait. Hume. Good battler in the second half. Wrapped up here. More than wrapped up. He was... Uh, Sticky taped up and plastered. Grant. Murphy. Davies now. Gaining metres and everyone counts in a game like this. Colbert. Petri mown down by Little Hume. Legitimately that time. A ball up. And Carlton have it in the half of the ground that they want it. They lead by 16 points. Just over six minutes left. Going to be a long quarter. We've played 25 minutes, and there's still over six minutes of actual game time. Enough time for Kangaroos. Not good enough. They need a quick goal. It's an understatement. Murphy's been fantastic to Hullahan. Colbert stood his ground. Now a chance for the Blues. Camberelli, one step from 50. Favola couldn't hold on behind. Free kick. Free kick to Brenner for Vola for a push. Now he will be on the impossible angle because it was right beside the behind post. But Brendan for Vola, he's kicked seven goals one. And dare I say it, he's capable of anything. As we watch it again, gee, there was something over the shoulder, but we've seen worse than that tonight. Not paid. Brendan for Vola. Just taking his time. He's kicked seven goals. Remarkable performance. What's he going to do? Check side off a step. He brings it back. Oh, don't tell me. He's kicked it. The Blues are home at Tester Dome. That will do it. Carlton by 22 points. Brendan Favola, 8. Well, we just see him on screen here. Probably the most difficult kick that you can execute. And he relaxed whilst approaching. And that is a beautiful kick. He has arrived. Those waiting at the station have had to be patient. Carlton by 22. And the seconds ever away for the Kangaroos. French back after a brief breather. Shannon Motlock. Solo effort. Well done to Grant on his preferred side. Has it got the carry? Not quite, as we enter the last five minutes. Well played by Brett Thornton. King, 
Ever wily customer and a pretty wily kick to make peace. Just can't get around Whitnell. Good kick. Morell hasn't been able to stay one. Harding had it crossed the line. No, it's a goal. Harding gets his fourth. And the Kangaroos just stay afloat. And I'll tell you, going back to the back pocket, Jared Waite was going at half pace and allowed King to take possession. I think Jared Waite thought it was going over the boundary line and he didn't go that hard. And uh, that was an opportunity that the Kangaroos were able to seize upon. Yes, and they keep coming, the Kangaroos. Young Harding there. That was his fourth goal. How do you measure the winner of that contest? Oh, well... Pretty tough. I guess Harding's done his job by kicking four goals. Yep, McKay has been a solid contributor down back and provided plenty of experience, leadership and drive. Inside the final five minutes of the match and the Kangaroos got to kick three goals. Three goals in less than five minutes. Petri, chance for Clayton, tried to knock it to accommodate Simpson. Sinclair on top of the football ties it up. We need a quick takeaway and a goal, the Kangaroos. Lee Harding, in fact, four goals, one from six kicks. Pye Morris bounces, big pack of players around the football. Sinclair, tunnel ball. Oh, Stevens committed his body and earns a free kick. Gee, that was brave and courageous. David King. Kick out wide, Motlop. Daniel Motlop has it, 45 metres from goal, hard up against the line. Played almost 30 minutes, it will be a long quarter. Daniel Motlop. He's been pretty good tonight, comes in from right on 50, it's a thumping kick but he misses to the near side. So, any chance the Roos, they need to take those opportunities, margin 15 points. Well, they'll have to do something pretty miraculous from here. Tremendous battle, this. You think Camparelli would just find an option here. He doesn't need to go long. A couple of those Carlton players just need to run towards him, so the kick becomes a simple one. But there's not much movement there by the Carlton players. Not too many matches have been lost from uh, three kicks in front beyond the 30-minute mark, but as Michael Christian said, it will be a long quarter. Lappin. Great break. Free kick. Free kick Illegal to the Shepherd. Yes. Just a little too much zeal from the Blues. Umpire Margetts was onto it. And the Roos are still there. Still chipping. King now. He'll take him on. He loves to take him on. That is a long ball. But it isn't straight enough. And the margin is 14 points. Paul Hammond yeah. just grabbing on the mate piece there. He just didn't need to do that because Lappin was clear. But it's OK. Beaumont has it. And that's what confronts him. Not too much on offer. Just needs to kick it along. Now close to the boundary line, and there he's signalling. That's the direction he'll go. Long kick in front. This French fist from Petri. Petri thumps it back inside, attacking 50. Thornton in the way. I've been impressed with his coolness under pressure. Brett Thornton, kick out wide, spawn. Only Carlton the home. Kicked into 32 minutes now, final turn. Lappin. A couple of casual bounces and a third. Driving kick towards half forward, close to the line. French makes sure it's over. So a boundary throwing at half forward for the Blues. Kangaroos have to conjure three goals. And time ebbs away. Brown a hand onto it, but Camparelli steals it. Carlton dangerous. Although this one eludes for Vola. I half expected the ball to stand on its end, come back into his lap, the waters to part, and the open goal to be in front of him. He's kicked eight. 
I think his biggest haul in a home and away game. And it might well be the difference. Carlton by 14. That was McCormick. That is Ariel Ping Pong. Davies. Here's Favola. Favola nearly. What? With a hand pass option. Clayton's away. Can run. One of the survivors of the 99 grand final win against Carlton. Looks as though the result will go the other way tonight. That's a good delivery, and Morell takes a rare mark. Now make peace. Good tackle, but a good shrug, and a very good kick. The Kangaroos haven't gone yet. Make peace gets his first. Margin eight points. Well, we've come to admire the Kangaroos over the last couple of years, but. Uh... And once again tonight, they've kept coming at the Blues and terrific running by Clayton, who ran the ball down the ground, but made peace there. Put through, puts through this late goal, and uh, he's played a pretty good game, Chris. He certainly has. And a big chance. Well, 34 minutes. You can't think there'd be too much time left. Kangaroos have tried valiantly to come back in his final term, but Carlton have had all the answers. French has worked tirelessly. Ineffective kick, Petri. Now Prendergast. Outside of the boot to half forward. Watt controls it. McCormick, who's been good. Now Hickmont. Spawn outside of the boot. Favola's got plenty of time and space. He's kicked eight. He runs to 45 and delivers it unselfishly to Davis, who lets it hit the post. And the anguish from Brendan Favola who had delivered the ball to Davies. He thought he might try and do the unselfish thing, but it cannon into the bottom of the post. I think he's saying to him, don't you know a genius when you see one that was meant for you? <laughs> Seconds surely edging away. Make peace, absolutely surrounded. Kangaroos battle on. What long ball. They've got to do everything right here. McKay. Thornton and McCormick, the Blues load up. They have loose men everywhere. They have it. Dennis Pagan turns the tables on the old shin boners. Dean Laidley tastes defeat for the second time. Calvin by nine points in a dual battle at Tostra Dame. This summer, we're delving deep into our collection to give you all the best footy action from the Fox Footy Archives. Billy, you are king of the world. The monkey's off the back Billy. The Fox Footy Archives, all summer on Fox Footy Channel. Go Harvey Norman for red hot deals. Super savings and 48 months interest free terms. Get a red hot deal on electrical computers, communication products, and accessories. Save on furniture, bedding, bed linen, and much, much more. Everything is for sale. And everything is available on 48 months interest free terms when you spend as little as $500. Conditions apply. See store for details. Red hot deals, super savings, and 48 months interest free terms available now at your nearest Harvey Norman store. Goes down towards our foot. Look out! Oh, Rebound! Remarkable! There is a beauty and a grace in toughness. And Rebound showed it then. One of the glorious parts of our game is the commitment of the players. When he knows anything could happen in a situation like that, but he just wants it so desperately. Kangaroos by two points at quarter time. Carlton by four at halfway, by 13 at the last change. The Roos wouldn't say die, but Carlton hung on by nine, regardless of the bottom line on that score super. For Voler 8, found some willing contributors in Hickmott and Houlihan. For the Kangaroos, Harding four from six kicks. Harvey always dangerous with three. Yes, and uh, I guess you look at Harding, uh, an opportunist. McKay did a wonderful job on him, but uh, the four goals, he walks away having a good game. But uh, Hickmott on screen there, what a wonderful game he did. And play. Justin Murphy he made a couple of bad mistakes early in the game, the game the Kangaroos a couple of goals, but he was uh, absolutely fantastic for the duration, ran hard and really committed his body.
against the future. Classic quarter. Is it an incredible win against the odds? Goyacek is kicked it, and the great run has come to an end. An individual milestone. He goes for goal, and he's got it. Last minute heroics. Any score will do. Or a team's insatiable desire to win. This is unbelievable.